Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Comic Wrap-Up. I am back, and uh, Drew is not on a delay. Drew, can you hear us? Yay! Yes, I, yes, I can. <laughs> it works! It works! See, I, I, thought, I thought you were going to play into it and be like, hey! You know, like, <laughs> wait for a second. Be like, no, uh... no, no, I... I'm still pissed off from that. I, I can't. I can't. I'm yeah. not over it yet. <laughs> oh, no. Well, honestly, and uh, so for those of you in the chat who, uh, who or, or those of you watching the show, uh, last week we had some technical difficulties. I was in Vegas with Josh and the Nerdrotic team for our Vegas meetup. Um, so I let these guys run the show. And unfortunately, it was, it was a little, there were, there were some hiccups, but uh, I can't thank these guys enough for actually holding down the fort and doing the show. Cause it seemed like, you know, I looked at the comments afterwards and people were like, finally, it's about time that Kyle and drew hosted a show on here. So, uh, but yeah, no, I can't thank these guys enough and I appreciate them doing that. Uh, but also as we, Josh and I left, I was like, I looked at Josh and I was like, do I, do we trust them? And he's like, they'll be fine. I was like, yeah, all right, that's fair. Uh, no, you no, but trust. I'm mad at you yeah. on the panel. I'm pissed. I'm like, wait, it didn't get taken down. Uh, it's close. It was close. We got a couple. We got a couple comments that were like, you know, never do this again. Yes, so. those I love the most. And they're like, <laughs> these guys are the worst. They're awful. They hate everything. They're the biggest pieces of shit. I'm just like, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> i'm nice i'm a nice uh what would that be like a foil or you guys are the foil where i kind of balance it out i don't know i because i i mean hey i shit on stuff all the time so i i think we're we're fair and balanced we're sure. fair and balanced um but i will whew, i will try and be as fair as and balanced as i possibly can for this wonder woman issue this week but man what a heaping pile of pretentious garbage so it's tom king <clears throat> yeah well i was like what am i yeah what should, what should i expect i take a week off and i come back to tom king doing the same thing it's like oh i guess yeah i guess he never left so never skip a beat yeah you're expecting uh, something fun Jeez, that's wild. Yeah. Do you do you do you guys expect Tom to actually have like character development with Wonder Woman? Like, I actually thought that maybe we'd get an issue where she progresses in her storyline. No, eight no. issues in. No, we are eight months into the storyline and nothing has happened. Like, when you think about it, uh, um, she started a Got war it. with the United States military, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing seemed to true. come of that. <laughs> it was just nope. like, all right, we'll let it slide, yep. I guess. Yep. Killed who knows how many U.S. soldiers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what what, has, what has happened to all the... the that's... Yeah. Hey, that was... One, actually, I think that's my favorite uh, mm. issue so far. <laughs> um, yeah, like... And then she... what What's happened to all the Amazons that were deported? Weren't they being like deported because they were all terrorists, deemed terrorists? Like, what what's going on with that? Don't know. Uh, <laughs> and isn't oh, isn't that other Amazonian girl Emily? Isn't she like running rampant, killing everyone? Like, wasn't that what the big issue was? Uh huh. That's when kind of was started like, uh -huh. the whole thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, Good point. Good the, point. The lasso of lies <laughs> is uh, um, <laughs> it's concocting all of these made up stories. I guess. Sure. Yeah, he's, uh, he's orchestrating it all. <laughs> it's I don't know. Beyond me. You know what? He's just writing at a level that I don't I can't comprehend. Right? We're all fucking stupid, so you know what? I'm a I'm okay with saying I don't understand it. Apparently. You don't get it, man. Yeah. It's deep. Yeah. It's deep. It's so deep. prophetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh well, no, seriously. I uh other than talking about, you know, as much as I despise talking about some of these books, uh I legitimately like missed out last week on friday i was like damn i'm bummed that i don't get to actually stay you know that for the show so i'm i'm excited to be back so and then it immediately went away when you're like oh i'm in vegas never mind <laughs> like, <laughs> what am i talking about yeah i'm gonna go hang out like I, i'm literally gonna leave this off this this little hotel room i'm gonna go hang out with kelly jones gary from nerdrotic josh 
we're all going to go out and have drinks and go get dinner. Like quarter black Garrett. Uh, we're going to hang out with Ryan Kennel and like all these, you know, fun personalities, x-ray girl and everyone. Uh, why am I, why am I upset that I'm not here? But yeah. <clears throat> oh, well, it was a good time. Good. Uh, yeah speaking of which thoughts and prayers though and uh you know for for those of you who don't know potentially chris gore actually at the meetup i think it was one of the first nights tuesday or wednesday not only did the man suffer a stroke during one of the evenings uh he had to be that taken was, to the hospital oh, seriously <laughs> yeah oh this, oh, is, new to this. this yeah. is all new to me oh my oh really okay so wow. yes um so unfortunately chris did experience a stroke, but the next morning he recognized that his speech was slurred and his, like his speech pattern was off. He called his friends, who, which then took him to the emergency room, and they said, "Yeah, we need to run tests and diagnosis and everything." So, uh, turns out, yeah, he did suffer a stroke, and so for the next few weeks, four to six weeks, he's going to be taking a break from film threat. Uh, but then, not only that, but during the night that we were all there at the meetup their car got robbed, their car got jacked into, and all what? of their film threat merch, yeah, all the film threat merch, all the uh, Attack of the Dock DVDs, Blu-rays, all the money that they had made from the event. No, no, no. Gone, gone. What so. the hell? And uh, Chris is doing well, and thank you for letting us know, Josh. Uh, Josh yeah. actually worked Chris's booth for the event. So like, what? Uh, yeah, wow. so- so Chris was out mingling and Josh was kind of by the booth and someone was like, Hey, are these for sale? And Josh kind of stood behind the booth and was like, you know what? I don't know, but I can ask for you. And sure enough, he like talked to Chris and he's like, Hey, do, do you want me to just run the booth for you? The entire night, Josh was a saint. The dude just sold Chris's <laughs> merch. He and x-ray girl were behind there. And Stephanie were just like hanging out, having a blast. And uh, yeah, so Josh came in clutch and, and sold a lot of great stuff, but it all got then stolen. <laughs> so it's like, uh, that, I, I can't believe gosh, that. That's insane. It. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So Josh is the one who broke in and stole it because he didn't get payment from Chris for working the booth. That's what it God. all makes that sense. Makes, oh, there you go. It all makes yeah. sense. Good for you, Josh. You know what? Fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny is I actually witnessed Chris Gore. Uh, Chris went up to him afterwards and he he had he has like a couple 20s in his hand. I didn't know how many, but I saw multiple 20s. And he went up to Josh and he's like pissed <laughs> drunk, gone. And he's like, thank you so much. And Josh was like, Nope, I won't take it. And Chris was like, No, no, take it. He's like, I'm not gonna take it. So uh, but then Josh I'll, later. I'll get it later, don't worry. Oh, oh, trust me, it's gonna my. be more than what you have in your hand right now, buddy. I'll get mine. <laughs> So. I love it. Good for you. Yeah. So, so then, yeah. So Chris was like, you know what? If I can't pay you, at least just take what you take from the table, what you want. And so I think Josh took that literally and was like, take what I want. Oh, okay. I'll just oh, steal okay. from your car then. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Chris turned into Frank Gore. So, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we love Chris a lot and we, uh, we are praying that he is going to have a speedy recovery and thankfully, from what I can hear, from what I've heard, um, and from what Gary has said, the the doctors think that he will make a full recovery, which is like fantastic. I'm That's I'm great. thrilled to hear that. So, <clears throat> damn, yeah, Chris. I mean, who would have thought, man? Like one of our one of the most fun evenings that we have, you know, together as fans to like meet up and and get together in person. You never expect something like that to happen. So. But right? uh, yeah. just do a young guy like him too. Like dude, like, hey, seriously. Man. Young and active and healthy and yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, we are uh we are praying for him and and uh I know that he's got a ton of support from from all the people that love him. So um I once I got back from Vegas, which was a blast, and uh, I know that you guys talked a little bit to josh on josh's stream uh like about the the evening so if you guys want to hear more about like the entire week because we were there from tuesday to like sunday um so it was wow. it was legitimately almost an entire week so once i got back though i got sick of course 
<laughs> so uh, shaking hands and kissing babies, you get sick once you get back. You're super famous. Everyone wants to take a picture with MVP. <laughs> so I, I, I get it. I understand. Holy yeah. shit. You're MVP. I know you. Yeah. You shit on all the all the, those comic books. <laughs> what those other two pieces of shit, right? Yeah. That's me. <laughs> no, they were actually like, MVP, where, where are the other guys? We want to meet those guys. And I was like, oh. Said dang. nobody. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> want to throw shit at them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I guess you could call it con crud, even though we weren't at CinemaCon. It, I think it was just the fact, and I, this happened to me at um, uh, LA Comic Con. Same exact thing. I think it's a mixture of you, like whenever I do these things, I get like two hours of sleep a night. Like I sleep for like two to three hours and then I get up and I'm ready for the day. Um, just because we're, we're, we want to hang out. And then uh, I don't normally drink and alcohol tends to lower your immune system. So I think that could also be an issue. Um, and yeah, I, I think just naturally when you meet so many people. What's that? And lowers your inhibitions and uh, dulls the senses and many other things. Uh, yeah, all, all that stuff. All that stuff. Yeah. So, But with all that being said, yeah, unfortunately got sick and I've just been on the mend. So if you guys hear me uh, being a little bit more congested, <laughs> that's probably why. So. And on top of that, um, Aaron Sparrow or the great Aaron Sparrow, he has the flu. He's he's fighting. He's still getting recovering from the flu. It's ridiculous. I know, man. So so we yeah, our thoughts out to him as well because mm. apparently he's been like down for the count. So hopefully Aaron's been doing feeling a little bit better. Um, <laughs> yeah. Josh and I got uh, no no no. Was it Friday? Was it Friday? Yeah, I guess it was Friday because Saturday we left. Yeah. Or Saturday, Josh had to hop on a plane. So, um, mm. yeah, Friday, I have some of the most embarrassing videos of me because Josh kept filming me <laughs> as I was <laughs> either dancing or laughing or doing some dumb stuff with the the crew. So, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun though. So, arcade bars, it was a blast. So, yeah, we got to watch. Uh, yeah, we got yeah, to watch yeah, Josh beat the X Men. Yeah. Yeah. X Men, welcome to die. Welcome to die. Um. So yeah, but all that being said, yeah, it was a it was a blast. I'm very very blessed and honored to have this like friend group. Uh, that's that seems to, like even even when we're not because like we're online, right? But then once you get in a person, like there's almost more of a connection. Of course. Um. But it almost feels like then w once you see everyone again online, um, it just feels like you're hanging out with them again. And so it's a it's a really cool feeling to be with everyone in person. Um, but I'm a hugger. So as you know, well, Wes always gives Drew a hard time because Drew's a hugger as well. Yes. Um, it, but, it, it, uh, it's amazing that people it, 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 I, I know it's it's not kosher in today's community, unfortunately, but. It, I mean, Joe. It's amazing. Like Joe is surprised. Everyone's always surprised when I give them hugs. But it's just that's just the that's just the way I am because um, just I'm very fortunate to have all you guys in my life. That's the way I see it. Yeah, especially in Dallas, uh, we were given hugs like crazy. So yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I can see Kyle being like Garth. Like, like, yeah, I can see Kyle being like Garth. Like, nope, nope. Garth, come on. No, nope, oh, yeah. nope, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck off. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm a hugger. I was going to say, <laughs> even if you were like, hey, no, 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 that's cool. Like, do one of these, you know, the little, all right, cool. Like, yeah, <laughs> yep. we're good. Definitely. Nope. I am going to, I'm going to bear hug you. So your arm is going to be like, oh, shit. You know, like, you're going to be like, all right, yeah, cool, man. Yeah. And then it's just going to be like, oh, no. Bring it in for the real thing. Yeah. So. Brothers yeah. don't. What, what does he say? Brothers don't. Something. Brothers don't shake hands. Hug. Brothers got a yeah. hug. <laughs> That's yep. That is me at meetups. So there you go. Oh, I love it. Um. Well, let us say hi to the chat real quick. We've got MG always dropping words of wisdom, man. Thank you, MG. Uh -huh. He says, "Let me be clear. What it is is <laughs> it's horse." <laughs> 
horseman, not horseman. Mm. No, 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 I got that wrong. It's horseman, Man, not horseman, <laughs> not horseman. Okay. Got it. Moreover, oh, g- thank you for clarifying. Mm. Especially now more than ever, absolutely. Don't let them tell you it's horseman. I take exception to that. My position is it it is is it's it is horseman. Very mm. well. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I get it. <laughs> I'm clear now. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, is that clear? Like, does he need to explain it more for you? Cause like, I, I don't know. Mm. I feel like that's pretty, pretty straightforward. So I get it. Uh, Jared, what's up, man. Hopefully you're having a, a good stream tonight. I think I saw you guys live earlier, so hopefully you're doing well. I did see this and yeah, Jared, we will be going over this comic book. It's strange. Because uh-huh. you almost want to ask yourself, like, is he mocking it or is he trying to criticize it by utilizing it as the mouthpiece for the villain? Right. We'll, right? we'll get to it. We'll, 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 get, yeah. we'll get to it. So yeah, we'll to it. hold your horses, Jared, because we will get to it. It is an interesting dilemma, but regardless, it is dumb. Hold your horsemen. Hold your, hold your, horse, your horse man. Mm-hmm. Your horse, <laughs> horse man. Hold your horseman. Men. Yeah, hold your horse man. men's menzies. Uh, Rudy says, "Good to see y'all back together again on Friday." It feels good to be back together again, Rudy. Thanks for thanks for coming out yep. and supporting. Uh, howdy from the great state of Louis, Louisiana. Uh, thanks yeah. for being here, Otis. Appreciate it. <clears throat> and yeah thank you guys everyone for being in the chat and hail to everyone who's here mark mcgrath who is down with mvp you know me brother thanks mm-hmm. uh let's see oh of course zax is here but uh <laughs> see josh gets the heart eyes but we all know i, I get the salute so <laughs> good to see you zax thanks for being here dude uh zax if you want and this is a, a call to all of our members tonight. Right after this live stream, for our members, we are doing an exclusive review of the document, 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 cards. Dokumen. We will be looking over each and every single one of them. And uh, we have some fun stuff planned. Uh, I've actually written my own document card, doc, document card and uh so yeah we'll have some fun with that so if you guys are members and you want to uh see our review of the document cards come hang out with us right after the show um wait how many of them are there i think there's like 13 dude oh fuck (laughs) there's a there's a lot (laughs) wait there are that many characters what are you talking of 13 yeah there's not 30 there's not bystander number one bystander number two Dude, demon number two. Look at this. Demon number one. Yeah, like, look at this. Who are they? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ele- uh, eleven. All right. Eleven. Who are eleven right. people? I don't even know eleven people in there. I... Uh. Well, you. I mean, you've got t- Takari. Tahar, t- Takahari. The fuck is that? You've got. He's. Come on. You know him. Well, we we obviously know Isom, right? No, we don't, but okay. <laughs> um, oh, well, yeah, I guess I guess that's true. We have Yaira. We all know Yaira. We've, we actually know Yaira. We now. know Yaira. Yeah. Yeah. The Icelandic, Polish. No, what was Jewish? she? No, she's Nor- Jewish. Norse? Uh, sure. She's Druish. Ah. Druish. Yeah. <laughs> um, she doesn't look Druish. <laughs> <laughs> Who Santorum? the fuck is that? <laughs> Dude, this is the guy who's who's uh, who fights uh, Isom. He's uh, Darren Fontano. Darren was the one at him. Merck. Oh, he's the owner club. of the club, right? Yep. 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 Okay. Of, of Merck that. Publishing. I mean Merck Club. Oh. Uh, Lillian. I don't know who that is. Michael Copper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. These are legitimate characters. Um, we also have Braxwell. <laughs> it's just one name. <laughs> yeah. Sure? Yeah. Well, it was, well, his real name is Jeremiah. Oh, okay. 
but it's spelled like how you spell Kyle. <laughs> yeah, like a dumbass. Like Aunt, Got it. Like, I, I, I was wanting to say Aunt Jemima, but it looks like... Uh, yeah. To, to oh, it does. <laughs> probably not far off. <laughs> yeah. And this dude... Ten? What a bit. One I was going to say, <laughs> by the way... <laughs> this dude is not 5'10, 170. That's a small man. That's tiny. <laughs> As a superhero, like, yes. 5'10 is like roughly for America. I think that's uh, above average height. But, bro, is if it? you're 5'10, 170 as a superhero, Ooh. That, that ain't it. You're chief. a paperweight. You're getting, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're getting knocked around. Yeah. By Yaira. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Yaira's like 6'4. Jesus. 6'4, 200 uh, pounds. Yeah. You know? Yeah, <laughs> dude, I like what? So I'm 6'2", like 220, 230. Kyle, yeah. you're 6'2", probably 270. Two, two, 70. That, yeah. yeah. And then Drew's like 6'3", but he's he's uh, athletic. So you're what, 200? Uh, Drew's like one, probably two, yeah. 70? What are you, Drew? I, it's, I'm always 170 at like 6'3", three would be like, like this. Yeah, I'm between like one eighty. You met Drew. He's like a he's fucking thin. Yeah, but he's not like a rail. Like he's still got some to- muscle tone to him. But so, yes, yeah, muscle. Yes, yeah, muscle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, that, yeah that, definitely that, <laughs> for sure. So yeah, okay. So, okay, so six three one ninety. We'll say Drew on a good day, yeah, soaking wet that's after fair. dinner. That's fair. Yeah. That's, that's okay. fair. Yes, after dinner. After the dinner, count I had tonight. Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah. yeah hey. Yeah. Okay. All right. But yeah, man. So. All of us are like skyscrapers compared to this guy. This guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh well. Uh, Did they actually I'm so talk lying. in ISOM number one? Did they actually do anything in ISOM number one? I don't remember uh, Alpha Corp Alpha doing Corp? anything. They watch him fall into the car, right? Right, but they don't do anything. Mm. Yeah, I guess you're right, huh? So I wouldn't consider yeah. this the first appearance because this is just like the first appearance of Wolverine or Gambit. Like you're just going to have people argue over, well, it's a cameo technically, right? Wouldn't their first appearance be an alpha core where they actually do stuff? Uh, no, no, that's a full first appearance. Like is they're it? a full, I think so. I'd have hey, to X-Men annual with Gambit and he does shit and has multiple panels of him doing stuff and they don't consider they still that the first appearance. Really? Oh yeah. <clears throat> so well, I'm calling bullshit. I'll have to I'll have to look at my ISOM number one. Yeah, because I, I, I need to I need to look at that again. Uh Validin. See, okay, Validin. Oh, who is that? This is the this is the guy I was talking to you guys about, the Norfrica band. I'm pretty sure Which, this is the Okay, dude that the is just band. literally a pinup. Like they don't do yeah, anything. That's true. But like I want to know more about this guy, but everything's unknown. His weight is unknown. He's seven feet tall. What? How His do you name... know that? How do you know he's seven foot tall? You know how much he weighs. But <laughs> I don't know. And what's Asgore? <laughs> what? We're getting ahead of ourselves. Oh fuck off! But yes, there are. Uh, there are. I think I said well, eleven, right? Yeah, eleven cards. So there you go. So that's just a sneak peek. For you members, if you guys want to hang out afterwards, we will be reviewing those and taking a look. And we'll be like, we'll actually like read them line by line because I want to understand these characters. And uh, the boys, the boys are getting paid overtime for this one. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Steph, Steph says, hi, Kevin. And good bless you, Drew. Yeah. Is Drew you, playing Kevin. a video game? Drew is playing the video game of life. No, and he's, uh, yeah. It's the I'm the, I'm the ultimate uh the ultimate emulator. No, but sir, I, I I'm uh talking. Let's just say I, I'm uh I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. Mm. George St. Pierre is five ten. Would fight at about, he's five ten. No way. Fight about one seventy. Yeah, but that's George St. Pierre. Like when you look at Braxton in the comic, Braxton's like. He's like built. He looks like a linebacker, not not like a wide receiver. I don't yeah, know. those guys cut weight, right? Uh, walk for, around that. You, yeah, yeah. For for so, wrestling and for fighting, yeah, yeah. So he's probably oh, cutting. Yeah, come on. I've seen Vision Quest. You know what they do? Yeah, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Josh says, fun fact, Ryan, Re- again, Ryan Reynolds is 6'2". Come on. I'd, I'd give him six feet, right? But I haven't met him in real life. I don't know. Wait, around 180 to 190. Dang. That's lean. He was, he was cut for that movie. Yeah, though. he was. Yeah. So. Yes, he, the only well, he's time. he's been cut for the longest time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has. I'll say this. The only time in my life that I've been like 190 as an adult uh, at six foot two was after boot camp. <laughs> like right after that, I went right back up to like 200 pounds. Oh, I think I hit. I think I I'll think say- my lowest was like 200 in the academy yep. getting right yep. out. But lowest then again, I was at was 145 in the Air Force. No. I, Kyle but, knows. Kyle Kyle yeah, you didn't eat I food. Was... You ate nothing but banana smoothies and bananas. And then you have a <laughs> banana smoothie. The only time you ate fucking food was when I said, hey, I can't live off of this. I was in high school on the swim team. I'm like, I need fucking food. I need yeah. to eat a meal. We're going somewhere to eat food. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my God, dude. One, mm-hmm. if you were a man... Yeah, I, 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 I don't know that. that I was just a runner. Seems like I, can, I will tell you. Yeah, I, I was a distance runner. I, I was running like crazy. Like I was always just uh, seeing how fast I could go, just uh, always up at myself, running mini marathons and running the like, 30, 40 miles mm-hmm. a week. And uh, wow. now I've cut back. You know, it's like now I'm, I'm right around one ninety now. So I've put up, put on. I'm back at a healthy weight. I was gonna say like there are weights. There are men and women who like have a certain weight that they just kind of maintain that they look good at. Like when I was 180 or 190 or something, I almost looked like emaciated. Like I look better with a little bit more weight. So I I think, yeah, for man, 145, that's like skin and bones, dude. At six foot three, that's wild. Yeah. Uh, yeah. (laughs) But hey, at least you could outrun everyone ever. Like that's crazy. That's that's mm-hmm. pretty incredible. And it's like granted, a granted, loss of step here or there. I could, I could, I could still pretty do pretty well. I think at my age, so I'll take it. I think, it, yeah, I think if you really wanted to, you probably could get back to that weight, but it would be, it'd be tough. Yeah, your knees. Would I, be if gone. I if if I wanted to, if someone pushed me, if said like, if, if someone was going to challenge me, like, all right, let's do this. I could, I could absolutely do it. But. Yeah. No. Uh. Real quick, wanted to say hail to our man, Jack Frost. Jack and I had a great conversation at our local comic shop this week. Uh, Yeah, I apologize. I I shook your hand. I I had hand sanitizer in the car, though. Don't worry. Um, But yes, Jack, always a pleasure to see you, man. And thanks for the great conversations. Like, it's cool to have someone who watches the show and also someone who I see, like, at my comic shop. Because, like, it's like the the conversation continues. So... Um, like I picked up my comics for the week and he was like, Oh, is this what you're going to be reviewing for whatever? So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's cool. We'll always appreciate you, Jack. Thanks for being here. Uh, wanted to give a shout out to Derpy Hoggington coming in with $2. He says, hip, hip, hooray. Three (laughs) cheers for Kyle. Yay. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Hooray. that's high praise mm. hip, hip, hooray hip hip hooray yeah there we go yeah we have to lift you up on a chair <laughs> wow i don't even wow. get that i don't even get that praise from my my fans that's that's wow so i only get it here i don't get it from anybody my wife i, so. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I guess that's fair yeah um but Derpy, thanks for being here, brother. Thanks for the two doll hairs. Always appreciate you being here. And uh, you know what? Even if you have a weird infatuation with Kyle, we still love you for it. So <laughs> just he's smart. He he's playing the long game, I guess. I don't know. Um, because he, he's correct. Like, yeah, being correct. Yeah, that's, that's uh, right. Because uh, uh-huh. he's like, okay, realistically, he's like, Max's channel is going to get taken down. So who's the next one to have a YouTube channel? It's going to be Kyle. So he's playing to your, you know, vanity. And he's like, mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> <A track. No. laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Zach's remember for 23 months, dude, one month oh. away from two whole years. Thank you so much, Zach's. Uh, you are a legend. He says, have you reserved your lady custodes yet? Oof. Oof. Just hit me. Hit me. The fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> Ribbed for her <laughs> pleasure. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> lady custodians. <laughs> Like Lady custodians, like they they sweep around. They sweep the... up trash. Yeah, is that a thing? No, they, they're, no. they're like the lady. I know. I know. He know they've been pledged. Housekeeping, <laughs> lady, lady custodian, housekeeping. <laughs> yeah, they clean up. They clean up after all the after all the wars. They just clean up all the dead bodies and stuff. No, that's awesome. Hey, someone's got yeah. to right. Right. I Why mean, not women. Think. The fuck else are they doing? <laughs> oh, God. Fucking ass out there and clean this shit up. <laughs> wow. Tom King is is scoffing at you right now. <laughs> but uh yeah, no, Zach's I am currently writing a video, like I'm writing a script right now for a video, and it is taking me such a long time to get my thoughts on paper, man, because it seems like every day there's more news that comes out about it, or like I just I'll I'll think of something and I'll be like, I can't believe I didn't even mention this, or I, I forgot to talk about this so yeah it's um <clears throat> I'll, I'll be talking about it either on max's man cave or in the video that i post so it's uh a mm. lot to talk about already i'm on page like six so that that tells you how oh, much man. i want to talk about this um so. they really got you huh well there's i mean there's a lot to because i want to it's like autistic detail where you have to like cover okay here's the lore and then, like, here's the news that came out from Games Workshop. Here's the response from that news. And then, like, here's what I think. So I'm going to structure the video in, like, kind of a, a certain format that talks about everything. Mm. There's just so much to talk about. It's like, whew. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. For the most part, uh, people do not like the change. Rightfully so. Oh. Shocking. Like, your chance. I know. Your Fans chance. of something hate change. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> imagine it's especially God. like highly autistic fans of oh. warhammer that like <laughs> have devoted thousands of hours and dollars to this hobby because it's not a cheap hobby so what is and then for yeah so they're not happy and uh it shows and i think people are just like they've been so burned before by marvel and dc and and disney and star wars and doctor who and lord of the rings and you know everything everything witcher yep star trek yep i think i've got everything wheel of time uh they're just like yeah no fuck this so we're the gatekeepers of some of this stuff dude well that's the thing it's like we thought as the fans we were gonna hold the gate and we were gonna be like fuck this we're not doing this stuff anymore but it was actually Games Workshop. It was the corporation who came out and they were like, nope, here's the lore change. So it's like, how, Wait, how much the can people fans... created Warhammer or the company that now owns Warhammer? The, the company Games Workshop itself on their official Warhammer Twitter page and in the new, like the lore book that's about to come out, both have stated that there are now female custodes um, and have always been. And that's the big thing. It's like they didn't do it in a clever way. They didn't write it into the lore to make it actually like um, make sense. They did it in the most like lazy patronizing way possible. And they're just like, they've always been here. What the fuck are you talking about? It's just like, although you've never seen them apparently up until now, right? For 37 years since the birth of the hobby in 1987 or yeah, 1987. There has been no mention of them. So who created? Now. So did one person create Warhammer or a company created it? So Rick Priestley, funny enough. Hey, eh? uh, right. Rick Priestley actually was the creator of what was called like the Rogue Trader, which was like the, the army book. Um, and it had all the rule sets and stuff, which later then turned into like Warhammer 40K, Warhammer Fantasy, um, and all the different factions and stuff. But Rick Priestley was him and a couple other guys, I think, got together and began this tabletop uh, hobby. Um, 
because it started as like models, miniatures, and the the tabletop game, and then they expanded on the lore, they expanded on the models. Um, so it started with like a few group of guys who then created Games Workshop. Have they um, come out and said this is stupid? They don't really. They're older now, so I don't think they really. I don't. I don't see them talking much about this stuff. I think they are like, yeah, I'm out. So you need to find them. You'd be like, what the Maybe. fuck, dude? You guys are okay <clears throat> with this shit? <laughs> Some of them, I think we have seen Games Workshop employees that have worked in the past, like in the 90s. Some of those guys have come out and they're like, guys, lore changes, get over it. Like, you know, the, the, the hobby has to evolve to be more inclusive. And I'm just like, the hobby can evolve and it can be more inclusive without ruining established lore and without getting rid of male dominated spaces. But of that's course, who that's play your stupid and... fucking games. Like that's who play your game. And why <laughs> yeah, is right. it inclusive? What the fuck does that even mean? It's a tabletop fantasy game. Yeah. What the, f what is what? No, Kyle, what I want to be, about? I want to be represented as a alien species that it devours things as a woman That's sure a you're you're a gobbledygook congratulations <laughs> have fun go yeah oh, so Jesus. um but i want to see myself yeah. as that thing so i want to be in a wheelchair and i want to have a <laughs> uh a limb missing and i want to be a person yeah. of color and i want to be trans uh I want to be yeah. able to select my own pronouns. We all, all, all 67 of them. So, yeah. Well, because realistically, inclusivity means exclusivity. Because being fully inclusive, which, <clears throat> like we've talked about on this show, it will never be good enough. You can oh. put in as many women, as many diverse characters, as many, you know, this, this is or that's. It'll never be good enough. So, even if we are super inclusive what they're actually doing is being exclusive of the problematic white males who are the majority, like more than, so like comics, right? Majority is white males for the most part. Yeah. Warhammer, like 99.9.99999% is like white males. <laughs> that's, that's the Warhammer audience. Um, yeah. at least it has been for a large majority of the time, but there are women in the hobby and they're great. But and there are female characters you can be, correct? Other than these things, absolutely, yeah. So, what the fuck does it matter? Well, and that's the thing. There have been there are two armies that are all male, and there are two armies that are all female. All the other armies within the uh, universe are either aliens, so they have no gender, are like a kind of fungal uh, animal. So once again, no no gender. Or a mixture of both male and female. So that's pretty even when you actually look at the different armies. But now we only have one all-male faction, which are space marines. And now two all-female factions. Sisters of Silence and Sisters of Battle. So if they really truly want to be inclusive, they'll do Misters of Battle and Brothers of Silence. Yeah. But, but, they, but, they don't but have women can be male characters and vice versa. Right? Well... Men are the best women, right? Sure. But if you wanted Men to play the tabletop game, you could play as a, of the female Sounds of Silence or whatever the fuck they're called, right? Oh, yeah. So, no. What is it Sisters, matter? Yeah. Sisters of Silence and Sisters of Battle are badass factions and really cool armies and actually very good on the tabletop. However, they don't get as much press or lore as the male-dominated factions. But guess whose fault that is? It's the company. The, the company men. should be. Oh, got it. oh well, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, men too. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Sorry. Okay. Um, well, it sounds like you but, should be writing some fan fiction for uh, <laughs> the uh, the Sounds of Freedom or whatever the fuck it's called. Sounds of Freedom. Yeah. No, I mean the uh, the Sisters of Silence and Sisters of yeah. Battle. Uh, that's that's the thing. Is like the Games Workshop could have come out with lore, more lore for those factions. But instead, they're like, no, nah, we don't actually want to like try or do mm. something cool with the females that are established. We'll just add females into this other guy's thing. It's like, hmm. If I were MVP, I'd be reacting to Drinker's 40K video today. 
Um, uh, I mean, yeah, I did watch that and it was a great video. Um, but I want to keep, you know, we normally keep things comic related on. Sorry, on I was going down a show, so. rabbit hole. I apologize. We can say it for the after hours drink party, I guess. But oh, uh, maybe. Yeah, I was just curious. No, but, there we go. I know nothing about <laughs> Warhammer, nor do I care. I'm just curious about. <laughs> yeah, we just know about, we, yeah, we know about. Yeah, we know the we know the colonial marines, but we don't really know anything yeah. else besides. And we that. know the xenomorphs and the colonial marines mm, fight, but that's about that's true. That's all I got. Yeah, no, you guys are not far off. I mean, that's pretty much all it is. That's <laughs> got it. Could could you imagine? See, <laughs> Warhammer. I don't know much about it, and there's really not much to go off of. So I think there are some space guys that maybe kind of somewhere in the universe. And as I, you know, as I examine them from afar, I think that they have a lot of power. And if they get more power, who knows what could happen? Mm. That's, that's how my script would be written as a document card. So hell yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. My video will actually be like autistic detail, dude. Um, it's <laughs> already, like I said, I'm on my like sixth or seventh, like word page or whatever. So it'll, it'll be a while. So, um, <clears throat> so desperate for that Amazon fueled lifestyle brand vehicle. Thank you so much, man of for being here. Great to see you this past weekend in Vegas, brother. Um, yeah, that's another, uh, another, uh, rumor is that Amazon is actually holding a gun to games workshop and saying like, you better fucking put some females in this thing because we want as Amazon to use them in the show. I don't know how much validity that holds though. Cause people are like, Oh, Henry Cavill's going to walk from the show. And I'm like, guys, like we haven't heard anything from the show. So like, I, I can understand yeah. that from a, IP perspective where it's like, okay, we got to have some type of sex appeal, I think. So I can understand it from that perspective, maybe. But no, I do you really see Amazon being like, we need to make women sexy. They'd be like, oh, the male game. No, not that. They no, want no, but no, we want yeah, they, no, we want women, we want women with women. That's what we want. And ah, uh, yeah, I trans see. men with women. Yeah. Mm. They they want more of the girl boss. So they want so they go, okay, who are the most power? They probably ask Henry, they go, who are the most powerful beings in the Warhammer 40k universe? And Henry goes, the old well, Adeptus Custodes, which are the golden bodyguards of the emperor. Uh, they, they were the first ones ever created by the emperor to be his, like his, they call him the golden boys, like jokingly, but they're the 10,000 golden boys that just protect the emperor at all costs. And so they were like, is it a brotherhood? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. It's a male faction, male dominated faction of, of brothers. Um, in their lore, in the title of their book, in their lore, they are called the bro the Brotherhood of Demigods. That is their title or their sur, sur title or their surname. And so Amazon may have just been like, make it women. And he's like, ah. Hey, we're going to make it war slay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's just, I think, I think people are really like the, the Warhammer fans that don't really care about the culture war. The reason why they're upset at this is because how lazily and just like passive aggressively games workshop was just like, yeah, they've always been a thing. Fuck you. <laughs> they're like, Whoa, <laughs> what? So I think for the most mm. part, that's what's gotten everyone so mad. So, mm. But yeah, it's a good question. I I really don't know from if this is if there's any validity to the Amazon rumors that Amazon was like, you better put a female in there. I don't know. I can Chat, only what hope. do you guys think? But you can only hope. <laughs> um yeah, right. My favorite part about hobbies is investing thousands of hours and dollars into it. In the biz in the business, only oh, to change and tell fans business. that. You can go F off. Long line of tabletop players destined for the tabletop. This is true, Steph. True. <laughs> What's up, Soul? He says, I think of that about, I think of that about to be hanged meme now, you franchise too. Oh, 100%, dude. My favorite one that has come out of all of this, unfortunately, 
is the 300 one where Leonidas points to F.A.R.T.'s and he goes, you there. And F.A.R.T.'s like looks at him and he's like, may your hobby hit mainstream audiences. And (laughs) F.A.R.T.'s like, fuck me, no. (laughs) Oh, God. Like that is my favorite meme right now. I posted it the other day and I was just like, yes, this is perfect. It's perfect. So... (laughs) sad man you know it like when everyone starts talking about it it's like that's fucked son of a bitch it's like (laughs) all right get the grave so get the gravestone ready where's the funeral procession let's go let's let's have this stuff yeah and then this is also the funny thing rhino helix is like the setting of 40k doesn't really lend itself to inclusiveness and diversity and representation like it is a hateful evil despicable place of people who only want to survive in in like the the whole setting is in the grim darkness of the far future there is only war there's no like well we should have equal opportunity for the women it's like no fuck that whoever can kill things just do it you know Hmm. and so i think it's funny why why people are like oh my god finally i can feel represented and it's like you want to see yourself as like a Nazi space racist? Cool, man. All right. Join the fascist regime. Come hang out with us. We, yep. Yeah, sure. Why not? So is she going to, uh, so is this, are these chicks going to be like making the food for the, for the guys on the <laughs> line or what, what is no, she going to no, be They're going to be on the front. See, Kyle, they're going to be better than all the other men. So, oh yeah. Now that doesn't sound very entertaining. Yeah. So are they going to make like figures of her? Like, is she going to, is this, is it well, one character? Question. It's one female character no, that's the key to everything. Or they're they're, they're saying like... that there have been like multiple women in the ranks of the uh, custodes for like decades. That's so their... are, they, are they chemically yeah. altered? Are these are these even humans yeah. anymore? No, no, no. they're genetically they're altered. These are like ten feet tall demigods. They are completely genetically different. Well, they're not even men humans. anymore. Then are they androgynous? Or are they just things? Well, that's. Yeah, that's kind of why people go like, "Oh, well, who cares if it's women?" Because by the time they're changed by the their um, by the process of becoming a, a custodes or a space marine, like it wouldn't even be male or female at that point because you are just now this like demigod um, mm-hmm. like creature, this this like this being that is greater than any human existence or superhuman, right? Um, but the process of making these men is one that it is like you have to be 1% of the 1% of the 1% of the population. And so the what people argue is that most likely the emperor would have chosen men due to their physical prowess. And if you are 1% of the 1% of the 1%, it will most likely be a male. Not as like a sexist thing, but just biologically. So that's how that kind of rationalizes out. But yes, there are a few factions that are like, by the time you're done with your genetic enhancement, you res- you have male features. You resemble that of a male person, but you know some of them have already gotten their balls chopped off. So, do they fuck? Are they uh, like the banging space, each other. The space wolves do, because the space not, wolves are a bunch of furries. So, but, no, but not the, uh, the immaculate magi. What what are they? The consiglieries. What are they called? What, what oh. is it? The Sisters of Silence? No, no, no. The guys. The, the Oh, the Adeptus Custodes. God damn it. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> like that, whatever that thing. Um is. those guys, are they like fucking everything like that they come across because they're just the baddest of badasses? And no, no, their sole purpose in life is not to be taken by a woman, not to be, you know, their sole purpose is to protect the emperor. That is their their they are born and bred. And they eat and sleep and do and shit and do everything to protect the emperor. That is their sole goal in life and to survive against the hordes of chaos and alien scum, Xenos, Mm. you know, filth. So, all right, dude, you think they have time for these OnlyFans hoes? The the custodians and the space Marines are like away from me, wench. I I do not wish to be horny anymore. That's what they say. Okay. (laughs) Oh. But yeah, they're they they don't 
They don't do anything with women. They're not into that. Well, that's not that's fun. fun. Never mind. I thought they were cool. They're you thought that they cool. were fuck boys just going around Hell yeah. villages like just a fucking bet, just taking <laughs> everything and just yeah. Hearing lamentations <laughs> of their women. Like I just oh, fucking man. Conan's just <laughs> raping and pillaging and plundering and just oh that's what yeah. I want. That's my yeah, lore. That's yeah, you fuck with my lore. Hey, so well, there you go. Anything. You've you've created your own lore. There you go. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Resile, this might be kind of cool. I, I know actually quite a few ladies in the Warhammer content space, entertainment space, um, that are not cool with this. So I could reach out to them. I know two off the top of my head right now that I know are not cool with this that I've talked to. So actually three. Fuck, man. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. It's like I know three women right now I could call on my phone that all would say, this is pandering nonsense. I don't want this and I'm not supporting GW anymore. How is that? In, how is GW making this an inclusive space for women? It, it's mm. beyond me. So For their Twitter bio? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then go check who are the top shareholders of GW stock, the usual suspects. Yep. Yep. That's the thing, Man of War. That, that, would, that came out like uh, quite a few days ago, actually. So... <clears throat> Something we kind of, that's the weird thing is like GW has kind of had hints of this for a while, but this has been the biggest just like FU change where they were just like, they've always been there. So that's why yeah. I think people are really up in arms. So, um, is it now a lot of the women who play are dudes? I have seen a couple of, uh, trans individuals, you know, playing Warhammer. Um, yeah, mm. right. We'll see. This is what's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> games workshop if they were gonna do this they should have done this like five years ago seven years ago it's 2024 you're late to the game gw no one's gonna take this shit anymore no nope. so, yeah you could have so, cashed so in 2000 and late yeah it really yeah it really is so i mean they are kind of army men toys so that's but they're cool literally what they sound army. like that's what they yeah. sound like <laughs> Yeah. What's up, Al McNeil? Hey. Good to see you. Yeah, Sisters of Battle are pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, so chat, thank you guys for your input in this. Um, because like I said, I will be doing a video of this. Um, it will most likely come out next week, like late next week. Because as I said, uh, this is like autistic detail where I'm just trying to document everything I can. So um, this will be, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's, it's going to be a really good video, but um, I just wanted to give you guys kind of my thoughts before I actually drop the full thing. So um, have you all noticed that when Max is trying to make a point, he does the politician point. Do I do this? I don't do this. Is that yes, the politician you point? You, you do the Bill Clinton? Oh, that's, no. Is no, this, no, no, no. That's, uh, the, that's the Bob, that's the Bob Dole. He's doing the Bob Dole. Bob Dole always called Bob Dole. Bob Dole. Well, does yeah. he have the thumb around? No, the politician thumb is on top. It's like this. Yeah. I think, yeah, Bill Clinton, I, think I remember. Bob his, yeah. I think Bob had his thumb around his fist. Yeah. I thought Bob Dole always had like a pencil or pen. In his. pen yeah, he's like a black pen. Bob Dole. Yeah. Always like a black Bob pen. Dole talks about yeah. Bob Dole. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I think I do this. I go... This oh, is what I'm trying to say. Damn, when I'm pointing you in go. your chest. At least you, you don't do the knife. Yeah, chat. There. You can feel me like just right in the sternum here. I'm like, <laughs> listen here. But <laughs> Steph is funny because she always notices my little uh, quirks. Uh, Rudy Tag for a member for 17 months. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Woo. He says, hey, Max, uh, am I recalling correctly that you were looking for Punisher 30, Holy War, and my LCS and found three copies damn hell yeah man well um yeah Whoa. grab pick them up grab them those are beautiful books and we mm. we got to read those with mike baron himself uh two weeks ago that was so, awesome that was good that was a really fun time so um let's see uh sorry i'm just making sure uh i got everyone but yeah so like i said the, chat sorry if i i didn't get the chance the chat. To, Ah, he is world. here. Sultan of Soup. He is oh, here. Man. Good to see you, Eric. Hey, and Eric, congratulations on... He just got monetized, right? 
Woo! I think so. Sure. Yay! 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 Cheers. Mazel Cheers, tov. Eric. Mazel tov. Yeah. Uh, and Luke says, absolutely. I give. I should be doing this. This is congratulations, yeah. <laughs> Eric. Yeah, that's a Nixon point. You can do the, do this like, one. Do, this you could do like the. Mm. Do like the the snapping point. Do the. Yeah. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Listen, because yeah. you get their attention with the snap, and then it's like whoa. Yeah. Oh, our our but. training instructors would do that in basic training, but like. We you lost your freaking mind you right <laughs> yeah. in front of us. Like, oh, yep, yeah. I'm there. Time out. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Steph, now I'm going to watch this back yeah. and I'm going to be like, okay, you're lying. You're lying. There's no <laughs> way. So Clinton did the point with the bent index, with the bent index finger. How does that work? That's weird. <laughs> oh, you guys. Oh, well. I think it was representing his penis. Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, no. He was working on a curve. <laughs> ah. So. Uh, Ellen, and we've got Nerdy Girl in the <laughs> chat as well. Thanks for being here, Nerdy. All right. What comics were we mocking tonight? And Ooh. Aaron Sparrow. Got some good ones. And a. A. Aaron is here as well. Aaron, we're hope hopefully you're feeling better, brother. So Yeah. Hey, we don't mock anything here. Come we on, love Aaron. we love all the books here. Hey. Yeah. So, uh, yes, we do not. If it deserves to be mocked, we will mock it. But we review the comics, and if they mm. deserve, you know, ridicule, then we do so. But we review everything in good faith, yep, and uh, as try try to be as objective as possible. Yeah, if it sucks, um, it sucks. If it's great, we say it's great. There you go. Amen. Mm. Uh, but there, but there before... are times when we get so emotionally worked up, something gets so stupid that we just have to just vent. Yeah. So. Drew, would that would that be like? Would you say that Comics Pro releasing that? Um, where was it? That ten percent of total comic sales was were Marvel and DC. Would that be something we could rant about tonight? Oh, it's fantastic! I mean, how could you not rant about? That? I mean, that's that's how it should be in the industry. Only ten percent. Yeah, ten, ten percent, ten percent, ten <laughs> percent. <laughs> uh let's see or no, no no sorry so that's that's this article that's this article that's graphic novel sales marvel let's see marvel and dc combined are less than 10 percent <laughs> of the book market the big two the big two the that big were the american two book market of the yeah, should be revolving market, market like so of, of all the, books of like graphic novel sales so this comes from the beat. Uh, this is written by. Is it Rich Johnston? No, it's Brian Hibbs. No, is it is um, it Heidi? Oh, Brian. Oh, Brian Hibbs. I think it's both Heidi and Brian. They put they tag team. They put their heads together and came up with this brilliance. Yeah. But um, they said Dogman, of course, was the best selling graphic novel. But from what I remember reading, this is a article about graphic novel sales. So they said that the big picture is that. Of the 44 points, so let's say 45 million graphic novels sold okay. via BookScan, which is the like um, the software used for bookstores, comic shops that like once you scan everything in, it you know puts it into okay. data. Yep. Okay. Uh, 50%, 49% were manga. Half of this were manga. Okay. Kids comics were 38%, so let's say 40 Okay. And the remaining 5.9 million sold were primarily aimed at adults around 13%, um, which means that Marvel and DC combined are less than 10% of the book market when it comes to graphic novel sales based on the software book scan. And what has it been in the past? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, because when you like, look at down? like... Has it always been 10%? Well, if you look at in terms of like down in this article it talks about comic book sales comparatively from 2022 to 2023 and if you look at those sales uh, it said 54 so almost or more than half of retailers reported gross sales of 300,000 or less while 18% of retailers reported gross sales of 1 million uh, overall overall sales were down in 2023 
comparatively to the previous year. The majority of comic book stores, 69%, reported lower gross sales in 2023 than in 2022. That's 70%, 70% or roughly 70% of stores said that they uh, made half as much, 54%. Uh, from from year to year. Um, and then they go, a bright spot though is that 22% <laughs> of stores reported higher sales. Oh, so you mean when these stores closed and everyone else had to go to the 21 or 22% of stores, those then reported higher sales. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I like how they're like, but there's a cherry on top. 22% yeah. of stores. Oh, you mean the ones that like stayed open? But, it's but there's flipping a corn in that pile the of crashing shit. market. It's flipping it over and be like, no, no, no. It's actually going up. <laughs> <Yeah>. You see? <laughs> like, oh, that's that's great. See, if, we, if, we, yeah. if we take this, if we take this chart here and turn it upside down, we're actually doing yep. well. Oh, yep. oh my God. <laughs> Everything's up to the right, fellas. We're good. Woo! It's hey, all look at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it says when comparing 2023 sales to 2019, fewer stores experienced sales decline for that period than they did from, oh, wow. See, because like when I think of 2020 and 2021, people had those checks, yeah. right? Biden bucks. And so they were probably yeah. just like buying, 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 buying. But this is actually saying that fewer stores experienced a sales decline for that period, 2019 to 2023, than they did from just this past year, 2022 to 2023. Mm. Where are they getting uh, yeah, the I mean, numbers the, from? The other big part, I mean, we have the knowledge of economics. I mean, inflation is up. Inflation is up a lot compared yeah. to yeah. 2022, 2021, 2020, and 2019. We had like next to no inflation <laughs> when Trump was in office and that inflation has gone up severely. And uh, yeah. basic, basic household items, you know, basic food, gas, prices have gone up. And unfortunately, it really comes down to wants and needs. And uh, comic books are a want. It's not a need. Absolutely, man. It's it's um, it's entertainment, right? Hey, JK. Yeah. Um, it is... Uh, oh, and we also got Kaiser Jose. I didn't see you there. Oh. <clears throat> it is not a necessity, like you said. It is a want, not a need. And when the economy does this, when it dips, people really begin to like hang on to their money and they start saying, like, I don't, I can buy comics anytime. I don't, I don't need this, right? Realistically. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, and I think even when you look at, let's say, so it said a bright spot, however, is that 22% of stores reported higher sales. Is that higher comics sold? Like, is that number we, of we don't comics know. sold or is yeah, that we don't know that funko pops Revenue. is it magic cards is it dog man is it uh right. is it porn who knows well it's like what do you mean higher <laughs> sales it's like well i made five dollars more this year than the it's like oh well that's higher sale we're gonna count it it's like <laughs> and where are these numbers coming from like you're just fucking throwing out percentages it's like i of what like what do you i i don't understand this like you're you're trying to skew this somehow but I still don't understand. It's always a positive, Kyle. This is not a negative. Come on. Mm. Yeah. But that, I thought comic is... sales are very difficult to track, but yet they seem to be doing a pretty good job of saying, well, this is 54% less and this is 22% higher and this is 74% less and this is 32% higher. It's like, well, of what? Right. And no, that, that is a good question. Like, where are we getting these numbers? Where are we getting the statistics of this from? Like, what... What point of sale software are they using in comic shops to determine this is how much we, and like, is it in every comic shop? Cause like, didn't they have direct market sales? They, the, comic books have had direct market sales uh, reports for the past, like de three de two decades, three decades, 30, almost 30 years. 30. Yeah. So like, wh why yeah. did they stop now? Why are we not able to f find out how many comics are sold? You know? Right. Um, and it said 54% more than half record less than three hundred thousand dollars a year uh, okay is that good what do, what does right, that even yeah. mean you're just saying like, a number and you <laughs> made less than three hundred thousand it's like okay if yeah, that like, if that shop makes 200k 
that is that good? Like, yeah, because it's like it comparatively like it's to what? Bad. Like, what does yeah. that mean? Like, that could be good. I don't know. Eighteen yeah. percent. What about the other percentage in there that you fail? That doesn't that doesn't make a hundred percent? What about the other right. percentage that you're leaving out? Are they in the middle between three hundred thousand and a million? Why did you choose three hundred thousand? It sounds like you're skewing the fucking numbers. Make it sound like they're not making that much money. Mm. Why did you pick that as the benchmark? <sighs> It's it's really weird how a lot of this stuff gets reported, um, because th this is this was I think this is in the title of the uh, video tonight, but this bullet point says sales of new comics. So sales of new comics. When I think of like new comics, I think of floppies, right? We're down in seventy three percent of comic shops from twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three. So like regardless of like everything. The sales of new comics, which is like I said, is that uh, I don't, is that how many comics were sold, or is that the revenue of these comics? Because both are concerning, especially when comics now are like four to five dollars instead of two to three dollars. If, so, if he's going to be making a blanket a blanket statement like that, I would admit, leave it to assume weekly new comics. Every weekly new comic. That's what he's talking about. The weeklies. Right. And that, that's what I assume as well, that when it says sales of new comics, it's like weekly floppies that are coming out. Yep. So, but yeah, 73% of comic shops. It's like, whew. all right. Yeah, that's a big issue then. Like that's something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. But we will never get direct statistics on this in terms of like, okay, we know that sales are down by this much, but we won't actually say how much like, like they won't say Wonder Woman is selling 10,000 copies. Like right. we, we don't actually know, or they won't release how many copies something is sold. Exactly. Nope. For the most so, part. Which says sales of new comics are down in 73%. It's like, okay, but you have to go into the nitty gritty that you can't just say, well, sales of new comics are down. It's like, right. Well, okay. But which ones are selling and which ones are, aren't selling or is it all the fucking variants you have like i i don't that that's such an arbitrary thing and such a giant net to cast it's just like well all the sales are down it's like hmm. uh, okay you're not helping well so josh says we had numbers because diamond was the only distributor but isn't penguin random house like aren't they part of scholastic and scholastic is really good with their numbers like they know two of the single issue of book that they print or sell. So wouldn't, wouldn't Penguin Random House be good about that stuff? I don't know. But but I think with Penguin Random, they're only Marvel and uh, some graphic ah. novels. Yeah. It would be a good start though. I mean, yeah. I think your boy Zach was saying like, all it would take is for like distributors to like hop on a Zoom call one evening and just be like, all right, here's what we're going to do. And just, all right, he here's how we're going to release numbers now. Like uh, maybe it's not that simple, but I just feel like it it needs to take one good meeting to be like, let's all get on the same same page, right? So well, shops yeah. that have eBay and whatnot and do Facebook Live, are they taking those sales into account at all? Ooh, no. But well, I mean those would count as new comics. If most people sell new comics, they're not scanning them, so how would they know? how many of a copy of something right. is being sold. And the, um, this, this book scan, this book scan software, I, th is that, do you guys remember, um, who was it? Uh, I forget who, who actually said that like in comic shops, maybe, maybe it was perch, but he was saying out of the comic shops that are still open, only like 10% of those comic shops have this book scan software so really when we do get statistics it's coming from excuse me those shops so it's not even a definitive 100 percent. these are what the, the comic shops are showing but we can get a good understanding because of that i don't know so can you is that a good sample size 10 percent. sure no no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah good yeah. enough we could just say yeah. stuff's down 78 percent of the 10 percent yeah, right. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um but yeah no i i believe this josh 
He says, my LCS owner at the comic retail groups are panicking because of how bad their numbers are. And that's sad, man, especially with like, Josh, your guy seems to have a cavalcade of like back issues and like really great books. Um, and so for him to say like, yeah, we're not doing well. Whew. Now, uh, Jack Frost, if you are still in the chat, I mean, Jack and I go to the same LCS. Oh, here he is. Comics are long-term commitment in what has become an instant gratification world. Yeah, that's that's also true. Um, <clears throat> but Jack, I don't see our comic shop here in SoCal. I don't see our place doing that poorly. Um, maybe it's just because it's one of the few that actually like, you know, our guy who runs the place is like always on point, always has the books that we want. He even like, he'll take a book from that week's poll and he'll be like, Hey man, I thought you might like this. And he'll like suggest us things. So he's really good about that stuff, but we've been buying from him for like 20 years. So like we, we know this guy and we know the shop very well. Um, mm. and I don't know if a lot of other people have that sort of connection with their LCS. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I'm sure even my LCS, I'm sure he even knows like, you know, damn, our sales are down. So what are we going to do to help? Has really considered what he buys because of shelf copies just sit around the store for the most part. Yeah. A hundred percent, dude. And I'm sure that I, like Ryan is a smart dude. He's been doing this for a long time. So I'm sure he knows what his audience wants and what they don't want. I think. So, so he's not going to buy Superman versus the Radio Shack calculator in bulk. <laughs> but Key Collector um, said it's the first appearance, so I had to buy them all. Well, Key, key Collector is always right. Kyle, yeah. where's your keys, Kyle? Key. No, key. Downstairs. Oh, I thought I had key. one. Jared says, "Question: What is it going to take before the retailers say enough? What do you guys think, Kyle Drew?" Hmm. What will it take before retailers I, like I, I we got to come together and do something about this, guys? I think if the cost if 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 they raise the prices on their comics like another dollar or two, probably two dollars, retailers would be like, no, no more. We we we've had enough. Or um, so you think it's if, price, not quality. Yeah, I think they're more concerned about price at this point. I I think. Okay. Honestly, a lot of the retailers I've seen, they couldn't give two shits about the quality. I think it's more about the price. Okay. Hmm. hmm. Well, yeah. Because there are some retailers that are like, I'm not carrying Funko Pops. I'm not carrying back issues. I'm not care Like, I'm solely going to be new comics, you know? Um, some guys diversify and they go, I'm going to do action figures and statues and Funkos and you know, whatever, mm -hmm. graphic novels, manga. Um, and some guys don't, but I don't know, I Kyle, mean, do, can you think of anything that retailers would just draw a line in the sand and be like, no, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I think they'll just take whatever they get. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. yeah, see, yeah. I, I, it, I just feel like there's going to be like, okay, fine. We'll do it. We'll be pissed. I don't like it, but we'll do yeah. it. Uh, it just, it does. It, it causes you to have to think outside the box. And unfortunately, you know, that, that's tough to do as for some business guys who've been doing this for a long time. It's like, well, you, you do have to diversify a little bit and it, it's scary. It does make it very difficult and change is very difficult. And some of these guys kind of probably have to. Um, Kaiser Jose says, can comic books survive if the big two played it by Miller's ideas? Kaiser, the only way that the big two will survive is if they listen to Mark's ideas. Like <laughs> it would help. It, it, yeah. It's, it's yeah. not, can they, it's if they do, they will survive <laughs> because like all, all Mark is really offering is saying like, Hey, put really good creators who are still alive that are like legends within the industry. Maybe we should get them on some of these books. Right. And and people yep. are like losing their minds. They're like, no, kids don't want that. Yeah. And as long as you have those barriers in place, nothing will change. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jack says at the shop, they used to joke with me back in the day because I'd spend 50 on average per week for sure, dude. Now weeks go by and I don't have anything new. Absolutely. Um, yeah, no, like I remember maybe I wouldn't do like 50 a week, but I remember doing like a hundred bucks, maybe a month. Um, now it's $20 a month. Yeah. And another factor is, 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 is how these quote unquote creatives for the big two are telling their stories. A lot of them don't understand the craft of telling a story. That's going to want you to want you to come back by the end of that issue. A lot of them don't know the fucking cliffhanger. They don't know how to draw a reader in to draw them back. That that's gone. That, that skill is gone with the big two because you mm -hmm. want to keep coming back. That was there, you know, for, for decades and that's been lost. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is, I totally forgot about this dude, but this is sad. Josh says, but oh, we know out? you're not. Mark backed out of doing the Superman book, bro. That's I didn't know wild that. if that's I the case. I, I never knew he backed out. I thought he was never given the chance to do it. Well, no, because remember, even Heidi was making fun of him in that interview. She was like, Mark, or you're going to get yeah. your little Superman book. And I was like, girl, he does not need this book. He can drop it whenever he wants to because he's got millions right now. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I did not know that. I or I, I thought I knew it, but I, I must have forgotten it. But damn, that's going to hurt. <laughs> like That was yeah. their only saving grace. So, oh, well. Um, yeah. So mm. all that being said, though, uh, let me see. <clears throat> let me read this and see if they have a way of how they actually got the information. Uh, Comics Pro, the organization for direct market comic store owners, conducted a survey of comics retailers earlier this year. So that might be where they're getting this information. With two thirds were non-members and one third were members. Preliminary results were released at the Comics Pro annual meeting, but these numbers drilled down a lot more and the news isn't that great. Sales are generally down and customer patterns and products sold are changing. Hmm. Well, as Aaron and, Sparrow and, said earlier in the chat, uh, yeah, Heidi believes that the reason why these, these uh, patterns are changing is because people are dying. <laughs> like not that the <laughs> hobby's dying, but like people are literally dying. Mm. I mean, guys like me and Kyle, new Max in our thirties and forties, we're, we're just dropping off like flies. I guess so. I mean, it's definitely not that we want like a great creator, like John Byrne to come on one of these, nope. <laughs> these, you know, comics. And yeah. You, uh, mm. Honestly, I, I'm saying this right now. I'm going to keep preaching this till the cows come home. The minute Marvel decides, yes, we are going to officially print and collect John Burns X Men Elsewhere into like deluxe editions, trade paperbacks, weeklies, artist editions. When they do that, they are going to make a small fucking fortune. We're talking like mm -hmm. I think last Ronin type money they're going to make. Oh wow! But till they do, that's not going to happen. Yeah, mm. I wonder how many people they actually got to do the survey. They don't say. Well, it says. Two thirds were oh, of what? Well, yeah, two thirds oh, of those. Seven? So they conducted the survey of comics retailers. Yeah, were there five? Of were those... there seven? Were there ten? Were there a thousand? Were there two hundred? Were there like well, how many? Three. If there were three yeah. of them, yeah. two two of those <laughs> two out of the three Got were it. not members, <laughs> and one of those were, were <laughs> okay. members. So <laughs> they did tell you, Kyle. Come on. <laughs> Damn. Did you not read the article? <laughs> I don't understand fractions. I don't get Give a that. Cow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on, cow. Um, it was my understanding that there'd be no math. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess that's true. Uh, it goes on to say both graphic novel sales and periodical sales are down in the majority of stores from amounts ranging from 1% to 50%. Whew, that's a big, that's a large margin. That's, yeah. Oh, my sales are down 1%. It's like sure okay. okay uh that's worrying <laughs> oh we're now we're now worried now guys okay worrying. 2024 oh sales are down by half oh gosh now we're worried oh boy 
but there were also some positive signs. Oh, that's good. Some oh. shops numbers were up. Oh, and retailers are evolving to meet the challenges of inflation and demographic shifts. Well, wonderful. Now I feel better. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Evolving to meet the challenges of inflation and demographic shifts. Meeting the challenges of inflation would mean lowering your prices. But if the prices are set by DC, by the big two, you can't really do that. And in terms of demographic shifts, I mean, buy Funkos? Because I don't really think kids are into comics right now. so They're not. Nope. Unless you're selling sports cards or some other shit. Nobody cares. Mm-hmm. Or little Digimons, Pokemans, Tamagotchis. <laughs> Tamagotchis. Uh, Gary, yeah, that's a good point. Now he's going to wait till public domain. Because then he can be like, yeah, I'll make this thing what I want. Yeah, but uh, the so is, little, little, oh, thing, little, little thing about that, the Superman in the public domain. There's very, very specific rules about which Superman you can do and what type of powers he has, how much is revealed about the character. It's very specific. Except Rob Liefeld was talking about that in one of his podcasts because he says he has a Superman story he's going to do, but he's abiding Ooh. by by the yeah he's working on something with with Superman, but he's abiding by that that trademark line like when Superman came out, like those rules of that Superman in that time, who he has to be. Like the costume, the yeah. powers, the name, everything. That's interesting. Mm. Um, this is this is a really good point. MG says Heidi is an idiot. Well, yeah, that, yeah. and then he also goes on to say, uh, if the industry is making less money because customers are dying, that means new people aren't coming in to replace them, which is a massive problem. And think about how wild it is that for a decade now, I'm doing the point again. For a, for a <laughs> decade now. Uh, comic shops pen. have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have one around here. Uh, comic shops have been telling off their older white majority white male audience. We don't want you anymore. You guys are problematic. We don't want you as fans anymore. We want the young, we want the zoomers. We want the diverse inclusive zoomers. We want that audience now. And look how look what that got. It got them nowhere because now those people don't even want to read comics, nor did they ever want to read comics. Um, so, yeah, there has been no replacement of the fan base, even despite their efforts to try and culminate a brand new audience. So that's what happens when you pander. But yeah, it's a shame. Uh, that's a shame. Mm-hmm. Uh, why would a kid spend 15 bucks for three comics that last him an hour? If that, uh, some of these comics we read today were like five minutes. Yeah. Um, when he can spend that same money for a month of a game pass and be in inter- games, video games. Psh, oh, rat no your brain. Yeah. That's what they say. Jack, I thought you were going to say Warhammer figures. No. But now I'm like, oh, I can't even say that anymore. Mm. Uh, so yeah, all, all that being said, I thought these articles were really interesting. That one, seventy three percent of what was it? Sales of new comics were down in seventy three pre seventy three percent of comic shops. Uh, from this survey that was taken mm-hmm. at Comics Pro, and then. Also, the other article that talked about Scholastic reporting that Marvel and DC combined were less than 10% of their sales when it came to uh, trade trade paperbacks and graphic novels. So, It's definitely eyebrow raising and it's something that needs to be addressed quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very but quickly. Is anybody talking about this? Does anybody give a shit? I, I don't. Like that should have been terrifying. Like if they got these numbers and they're actually real, eh, which I still don't know if they are or not, it's still like, it would be like, oh shit. Like it would be like, we are, we're fucked, right? Like it was, it's like looking around the room, like, are we all, we're all fired, right? Like we got to get new jobs. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I don't want to be here. Like not only is it like, all right, guys. Let's talk about a, let's talk about a, a strategy for next. They they're probably now like, okay, what's our exit strategy? Like, can we sell our company to someone else, or like, like how how do we how do we not go under? Yeah, as like a company. 
like can we have skybound can we just get robert kirkman to come in here and just buy it from us like what yeah, do you think we can I, do, do we, somebody got him on speed he's the, yeah he, he's the only one who has a who knows what the hell he's doing right now yeah, and the only Mark one that actually has any money what they're doing yeah, yeah, apparently. And you can, it's so, I always think it's so funny. And we see this cause we read a lot of his books, but like you can see how much fun he's having with like skybound stuff and how much better he writes when he's doing skybound stuff. Cause then when he's on other books, it's, he's like, eh. yeah, Josh Williamson, mm-hmm. Josh Williamson. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. But then you get, you get him on, on a skybound book and he's like nails it. So it is. <clears throat> Well, uh, yeah. speaking of uh, comics this week and speaking of, you know, an industry that is, I, I, I like, your boy Zach put it this way. It's like if you, you took a chicken and you blend, like you, you peel, you took all the feathers off, you like peeled the skin off, you put it in a blender, you shredded the chicken and then oh. you gave it to someone. And then they started to eat the the chicken meat. And then they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We still need that. We need to put this thing book back together. And you're like looking at the chewed up pieces of like <laughs> shredded chicken meat that you just ate. And they're like, you want to put this back together and make a chicken? Like a live chicken? <laughs> they're like, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, that's where we're at, where it's like, how, how do you even yeah. go back? Yeah. How do you come back from this? Right. Yeah. And for some people, the answer is you don't. You so, don't. Yeah. Sad, but. But as mm-hmm. Jerry would say, that's a shame. That's a shame. That's a shame. That's uh, shame. Did you guys read Night Wang? Night Wang? I did. No. This sucked. Mm-hmm. This was a joke. Oh, you did? Oh, my yeah. goodness. All right. Well, this cover is this amazing. fucking gay. God, bro, I hate that <laughs> fucking cover. It is so gay. I mean, look, this is Tom King at his fun. Th- this looks like this looks like a Heroes in Crisis page. Look at all the panels. God. It's great. Oh, it, this this book, the f- whole first half of this book, it's written by both Tom Taylor and quote unquote Marv Wolfman, allegedly. Uh, I think he just what? wrote his dialogue. Marv Wolfman is an actual character in this. And he's talking about how great and amazing Nightwing and Dick Grayson is. You know, just, just pretty much, you know, blowing him every panel. And it's it. I, I can't. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. And once again, we get teased with the uh, the um the what, heart heart taker, love breaker, the guy who takes the heart stealer. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, heart, blockbuster. Blockbuster. Heartbuster. Heartbuster. Uh, who? Oh, I thought it was Blockbuster. I thought that ball, was the ball, guy's name. Ball Buster? Ball Buster? Ball Buster? Ball Buster? Ball Buster? Ball Buster? Oh. No, that's, no, that's <laughs> the ex pirate me. girlfriend. That's the uh, pirate ex girlfriend. Uh, Who's in this? You guys made uh, me think yeah. of... Uh, you all made me think of the Seinfeld episode where... Uh, um, who is it? Who's it? Uh, Steinbrenner? Yeah. Where he starts love singing picker, the... Heart picker, love picker, love picker. Love Sorry, off off topic, way off topic. <laughs> Continue, Drew. I, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. But but yeah, just the the Marv Wolfman stuff is just like it is just blowing. It's it just it's like a full on fellatio fest with Nightwing. Just with him talking like, God damn it, you two just get, just get a room, Jesus, just get out of here. And it, it was honestly the worst part of the comic, the the whole first half. Now the last half, like the, there's a comic in the latter half that's actually really really <laughs> damn good really damn good um unfortunately it's it's put in the back to suffer because of uh tom taylor oh yeah i unfortunately i didn't get to read this one but josh is wondering they haven't dealt with heartless yet is that what nope you're he shows he shows nope he shows up again and uh nothing happens again <laughs> oh huh yeah kyle did you get did you get around to this bad boy fuck no i'm not reading this <laughs> <laughs> come on tom taylor it's the sign of quality uh i can't, that that cover alone was enough for me to be like this is nothing here for me i can't do it yeah so yeah. it's just yeah business as usual exactly yeah dang uh, i'm sorry to hear that especially yeah because like nightwing is 
Josh, isn't Nightwing like one of your favorite bat characters? But I don't know. Mm. Uh, Howard, Howard, Harry Potter backup? Oh, There's the Harry, Harry Potter, Potter backup. Not, is oh. he fighting Harry Potter? That would be Drew. Cool. Drew, you no, got that, that's us. the one. Did, no, did he come? yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Howard. Yeah, Harry Potter. He did the art in the uh, the back in the backup story. It was really damn good. Shocking, Harry Potter. Oh, mm. wow. All right, sweet. I'm not a big Harry Potter guy, but all right. Yeah, love Harry Potter. Are. It's always on TV. Yeah. It is always on any channel, any time of day. No matter what I'm doing, if I if I'm doing something downstairs, if I'm like, you know, doing dishes or you know, getting bottles or something ready. For little man, it's like Harry fucking Potter is always on, so I can always count on Harry Potter. Well, there are like six, mo- seven movies or something. Yeah, <laughs> like, and something's guess, always keeping yeah. them going. I'm just like, hell yeah, which one's coming um, on next? <laughs> oh man, did you guys end up seeing this? Um, what's up, Raphael? Thanks for being here, man. Um, did you guys see this on on Twitter? They some <laughs> some fan was burning photos of Tom Taylor. Because they were unhappy, I I didn't understand what? the context of that. I didn't get that, but I was like, "Because they were unhappy with this book, this is what caused them to or do pro- it." Probably just the probably just the entire run of Nightmare. Yeah, Wing. oh, like it's maybe. more than one book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, like even like I would never. I I mean, you guys know my my abject like ha- not hatred, but just uh, uh th- my disdain that's a good uh, disdain Mm -hmm. for the patronizing nature of like tom king's like you know books um you guys know that if you've watched this channel i would never print out a photo of the dude and burn it that's like that's weird oh this is the other this is tom taylor not tom king this is the the other Tom. well no i i know well i mean smug there's like smug tom and then there's um Pe- uh, or not patronizing. Um, Peg? Pretentious Tom. Peg okay, pretentious Tom, Tom. There's pretentious yeah. Tom and smug Tom. Smug Tom yeah. is Tom Taylor. Pretentious Tom yes. is Tom King. So. Yeah, pretentiously uh, pegged is yeah Tom King. <laughs> yeah, he does love his dommy mommies. Wait, so no. people took photo and burned of Tom Taylor because of Nightwing? Yes. Josh, is that is that what? Yeah, that one I, person. I saw a picture of it on Twitter, but I, I I just scrolled past it and I was like, "That's weird." Uh, I didn't know the context of it. So, Josh, do you have like an article or, or like a link or something? Um, did I guess he they, did he comment did, on it? Uh, huh? Did Tom comment on it? Uh, I think he he quote tweeted it, and he he just wrote. <laughs> He he just wrote, "Dude, I write comics," and then comics is like in all caps, being like, <laughs> "Chill, I write comic books like that." I'm not thing. Donald Trump. Jeez, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I was Donald Trump, then you can burn. My- <laughs> yeah, then that's fine. But jeez. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. I'm on Let's your go. side. What? I'm one of you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Drew, not 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 a good issue. Not a good issue. I just read it for the backup. Yeah, the Harry Potter mm. art's amazing in the back. The Harry right. Potter art. Uh, dude. All right. So initially, upon seeing this cover, I was like, "Oh no, we're gonna have to read a whole arc of like Batmite and Mister Mixelplick and like just all the fairies and stuff." I was like, "No." I read this issue and had so much damn fun. Like this was great. Um, Watch it. How did you guys feel? <laughs> because yes, there are some goofy parts, but I went into this being like, "Oh, I didn't. This is going to be bad." I came out of it being like, "This was my top one of my top books. I had three top books, and this was number two. I liked number it a lot. Two. Yeah. Well, there's number one. 10 out of 10. It's almost a perfect oh. comic. Yeah. Whoa. But this was this was number two. This was pretty damn good, though. Drew? What'd you guys think? No? You didn't like Batmite? No one likes Batmite. Personally. Did we lose Drew? No, yeah, no one does. No, <laughs> uh, I'm just... You're stewing? 
Yeah. It's... You wait. Okay. Wait. We so we have that a work for me. we have a disagreement here. So you guys did not like this book, huh? Uh, it. Mm. You guys can be honest. Like I, I, I fully understand that this is like not for everyone. No. It's not. <laughs> True. Drew's like no, no. It. Even Gary said, "I hate Batmite." Yeah. It, it, it was have. too much. It's too much for me. Like too. You said too corny. Oh no. Oh jeez. Oh, John. oh no. Is Drew on a delay? Well, bear mind, it's not just that too. We also get Sinestro's oh, little. Oh boy! <laughs> it's, it's like, and, and it's, no, I'm just. We uh, we also get Sinestro's little imp in this, and it's no, not a fan. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, we we do get a lot of the imps in the story, so it's not just Batmite. It's yeah, Sin Sinbite, and then we get Parasite Bite. <laughs> so it's God. like that's the know, level man. of humor we're going with here just so you know I, yes that that's I don't, it it didn't come across as humorous to me i just felt like okay they're they're trying to the, each one of these villains have a bite Ugh. and so or in an, an imp and so this is like you know i mean if nothing else can we at least just appreciate the dan mora art of course, you always can. Yeah. 100%. Like just, just cover up these two. Cover up Mixelplick and, and Batmite. And you've got a you've got a beautiful cover right here. That looks sick. It's, it's stupid, yes. but sure, fine. Mm -hmm. I, I just... Uh, it's... It's... Uh, Silver Age Goofy. And I appreciated it. I, like I, I... Mixoplick being like, do you know who you're talking to? And then Bat Batman just giving him a look and being like, okay, all right, I got it. Like that's not Marvel humor. That's just, hey, Batman's a badass. Mixoplick understands. He's not gonna F with him. Uh I I I just I wasn't a fan. I, I can appreciate how wide the net is on World's Finest. Like they, he's got. I mean, all the issues of World's Finest, he's covering a lot of ground <laughs> with a lot of different yeah. runs. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I can appreciate that, and I, I, I can appreciate what he's trying to do. But at the same point in time, I'm like, something. It's just not for everyone. People didn't like. The issue where it was um, Supergirl and Robin on a date. People didn't like that issue because it was oh, right in the it was a stuff. And it was, yeah, it was a filler. I, I enjoyed so it. It was fun. I enjoyed it too. I thought that was fun. Lightheartedness. I, I can appreciate lighthearted stuff, but this, it, it, very jokey. Um, it's too on the nose almost. And I'm just mm. like, I can't do a whole comic of this. You want to do a backup story with this? Sure. But yeah. not, on, not a whole <clears> issue. And that, you know, that's fair. Cause like I said, I went into this book thinking that exact same thing. I was like, oh my God, we're going to do a, like a, a whole run of like Batmite. Cause I, I do not like the whole jokey joke type of like, we're like self-referential humor. Like, isn't it funny that I'm a, I'm a Batman fairy imp. Like that to me seems dumb, but this felt like it was more fun than dumb. Um, and JK, Hey, I totally understand. Uh, a lot of people, including our friend Wes has said, I'm not buying any more Mark Wade stuff. So I, not just I that. he's not understand. reviewing, he's not reviewing Mark Wade anymore. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. right. So, I mean, this was like bringing in the great gazoo for the fucking Flintstones. where It was just like, all right, too, too much. Can't do it. It's fucking obnoxious. That's, that's what this reminds me of and I, I just i can't do it completely fair completely fair 
Um, we have a super chat here. Let me go ahead and pull this down real quick. We have a super chat from Rudy Teg for five dollars. Thank you so much, brother. He says, "Always a good show." Shout out to our first responders and servicemen. Yeah, hail uh, and women got to bounce for now. Well, Rudy, thank you so much for the five dollars. That is uh, really, really uh, great. To see you. Um, amen to that and hail to those guys. Uh, those, I mean, we all on this panel of men have all served in some capacity, whether it be, uh, you know, law enforcement or military. So we, uh, we appreciate it, Rudy. Thanks for your constant support, brother. Great to have you here as always. Yeah. I noticed that there are a lot of fans of comic books who tend to be like, from that arena, whether it be like military, first responders, law enforcement, like that whole, like I said, arena, but yeah. Yeah. It is interesting. Uh, let's see. Josh says, Max is going to need a new gay bestie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I liked it. Okay. Maybe maybe it's just because I spent a week with you, Josh, and now I'm like, this is the best comic ever. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Aww. Josh is actually super based. <laughs> um, but yeah, like even even the artwork of like Batmite, I'm like, gosh dang, this actually like the character design is goofy as all hell, but like Dan Mora seems to make it look like it fits. It looks good. Yep, polish oh, that turd all you want. Yeah, that's fair. The one thing that I did roll my eyes at, though, hold on, where is it? Because they're like, this is going to be the biggest villain ever, and he's going to try and challenge us for the blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, it's the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> my eyes were already in the back of my head from rolling before, so I... <laughs> Yeah, that. my I wanted to tear this as soon as I saw the new fifty two Batman Year Zero costume, I wanted to rip this in half. I was just ditch that shit. Get that get that the hell out of here. What the Joker? No, no, well that too. But uh, oh. the uh, the Batman Year the Batman Year Zero costume, like about a panel or two up. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah, this guy. That's, this guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. God, I'm tired of that damn with, costume. With, with the death blow. I mean, death strike. I mean, death. Death, death wing. blood. Death blood. Death blood, blood. blood. Yeah. Death <laughs> and I'm frozen. Fuck. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. This is <laughs> e like, regardless of how y'all feel about Mixelplick, like, just this art is. It's, it's the best art at DC right now. Like, hands down. Look at how he draws Parasite, bro. Like, that's the most frightening Very I've ever seen cool. Parasite, ever. Oh my gosh, you guys are now patronizing me. <laughs> <laughs> he looks good. Yeah, he, that's cool. That's cute. That's cute. It's very Toad Storms. Oh. Yeah. Wow. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. Moving on. Uh, so I'm actually going to recommend this one. What do you guys think? Are you guys going to give it a meh? I'm just going to say skip it. Mm. Skip it. I'm going to say skip it regardless of wow. the art. Wow. Two against one. It now becomes a skip it. I can't play the clip in good conscience though. Cause <laughs> in con, yeah. Cause I, oh. I, I feel it, a, a Dan Mora book should never be a skip it. Like, at best, it should be a meh. At worst, it should be a meh. Yeah. If Dan Moore is on the art. So, but I don't know. In normal cases, yeah. Normal cases. Uh, you guys read Superman? I did. Um, right. it, was, it was better than the previous issue. Uh, but uh, I... I don't really necessarily like how Lobo was written in this. Lobo seemed 
to tame. Uh, and, and is it just me talking to myself right now? It looks like it's just me uh, talking to myself because Kyle is out and Max is away. Okay, so yeah, Superman 13. This was, oh, it was good. It's all right. Um, the plot is progressing. Art is really good. But Lobo, he just, there's something wrong with how Lobo is written. He just feels too tame. In this, because even if, not too far, not too long ago, if you read uh, Lobo in uh, Deceased, I think War of the Undead Gods, that last part, I mean, Lobo was true Lobo in that. And here he just, it's hard to put my, it just, that, that cool factor, that badass factor is gone with Lobo in this story. And I'm not really keen on that. It's, it's watching both your favorite. He, both your favorite heroes, or I should say heroes, but protagonists, some of your favorite protagonists as dads who lack that testosterone. It felt like watching these two guys just lacking testosterone. And um, just watching these guys just ride around, just tell jokes, and it just wasn't, didn't feel right. But on a whole, outside of that, it, it was good, I'd say. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. So, man, you guys are going to recommend Superman and not Action Comic? I mean, uh, World's Finest? Yeah. Because this was an actual story, yeah. Oh, snap! Why did I bring you back in? I... <laughs> <laughs> I, Kyle died. I'm about to kill Kyle. Yeah, but um, <laughs> no, he's not dead yet. Hey, and hey, I, hey, someone's got to be the guy that says everything and be and be right all the time. Sorry, <laughs> it has to be me. <laughs> Josh goes. I can play. I I can play the skip it because y'all are wrong. <laughs> Fuck you. This is my channel. Exactly. <laughs> you guys had the channel to yourself last week. Now it's my turn. <laughs> No, I had a briefly all to myself for like two minutes. And yeah, um, yeah, that was all yeah. you. I had to run to the restroom and I didn't even like I didn't even see that Kyle had to dip out. So I was like, oh, I guess it is just Drew. All right. Uh, so so Max, you didn't like this or you didn't read it? Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to read it. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Well, because the action comics last week, that's like a compendium or a com what do you call it? Um connecting comic. Wait, uh, yeah, connecting cover. Thank you. Um, so th they're they kind of go hand in hand. And when I saw that this was the House of Brainiac two, I was like, well, I didn't read the first one, so I'm not going to read this one. Oh, you're missing out. This is actually kind of fun. Really? Yeah. It's oh, really yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Just but yeah. Like I said, my my only real downside to it, Kyle. You probably heard me about talking about Lobo. Just he really feels like he's lost that badass factor in this. Yeah, just... they tried in the beginning, which was kind of fun at the bar. But then, yeah, it just kind of, I, I, it was kind of fun seeing Superman go kind of crazy and Lobo being like, I've never seen you this pissed off before. And I kind of mm -hmm. like it <laughs> sort of thing like that. Yeah, I kind of appreciated, but yeah, we didn't get to see Lobo be the main man, which is kind of what I want. That sounds cool. Hopefully yeah, we get it. Um, well, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe I'll take a look at it. You should. Maybe I'll take a look at it. Okay. You really should. It's fun. The art is fantastic as well. That first Superman arc, remember when we were reading, when when this book first came out and like issue one to like four, we, were, we, we kept reading it and we were like, I mean, it's fine, but like I couldn't put my finger on like why it wasn't grabbing me. And after those four issues, yeah. I was like, I, I can't continue reading it but then they did the action comics were like superman was in a suit of armor and it was like this is kind of an interesting concept so it's just like it's i can't i don't know it just seems so sporadic with its quality that i i just never i don't touch it anymore because i'm like i don't know what i'm gonna get so and that's fair but this this feels like it has some stakes to it anytime you bring in brainiac and, and give him some balls it, I kind of like it, and his tete a tete with Lex Luthor is fun. So I, I, I do mm. like a lot of this. There's a lot to be had here, so I think it's worth a read. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
And it's all leading toward that unlimited, absolute, total power. Yeah, absolute, unlimited conquest. power. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. I, I'll, I'll tell you guys this. The second that Mark Wade or Dan Mora leave uh, World's Finest, I'm off it. I'm going to... And I don't think I'm going to be reading Absolute Power. That's fair. Just Whoa. because of the fact that... Well, yeah. Who wants to read more to. Amanda Waller? Hey, you have to. You're a comic <laughs> book review channel. But we're, oh, well, I mean... You weren't a fan. Here, but I'm not going to put it on did, my pull list. Did you see this? No, no, no. Oh. Did you see the solicitations? Did you see the, the, a lot of the covers for the upcoming issues of, abs, of Absolute Obsolete Power? With no. the, We see like a little kid. There's like a little kid Amanda Waller girl where she's like playing with like the Batman Superman toys or whatever. What? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Oh, like she's the big villain playing with her toys that are Superman and Batman. But she's like a little girl. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so dumb. No, it's deep. It's you don't very understand. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. You know what's very cool, guys? Blunder Woman. Yeah. Do we do we save this or? Let's just let's just go over it. Let's just get the. Oh, we're going let's for it. it. Yeah. Yes. Why not? Rip that bandaid Why off. Not? Oh, yeah. going in. Oh yeah. Go, oh. Going in. Going in raw. Mm. Oh, no. No going preparation. Raw, raw dog this. Yeah. No. Uh, no pre. Oh, pre raw dog in. Gaming. Oh, or, man, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she actually looks really good here. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yes, she does. So, um, see, I'm getting over a hot stove, but I don't see the stove. <laughs> 3d asset <laughs> stove guys confirmed wow no yeah last time i checked so, the stove isn't right under a sink <laughs> normally uh, what, eh. mine's not that would be where the dishwasher is because it's connected yes. to the sink and that's how mm, you have, have yes. to have those run you fucking moron <laughs> hey <laughs> Dan daniel sampiri what's his is that his name the guy who does these Sam, art Sam, here Sam Pile, Sam, Sam Pile? So, so Sampere. Sampere. Look Sampere. at this art. I oh, mean, that's hot. Whew. Oh, yeah. Very toast orbs. You know that toast. Tom King was like, I want my Dommy Mommy. Oh, punish I me. want her. To... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad. Yeah. Oh, actually, sorry. What am I saying? So Wonder Woman actually oh. looks like, you know, though she is tied up, she looks very pretty. She's very well drawn. But no, Tom King, you know, he was like, he, oh, this is what he, he's like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh please, more. almost there, almost oh. there. Oh, yeah, he's just mm. loving this. Oh, mm. you know, he's like 38 seconds is all he needs when, when he's reading oh, this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it was perfect. Oh, <clears throat> so. But yeah, uh, so if anyone has been online, uh, they may have seen some articles from a couple different like creators within the comic sphere um, that have said like, all right, I'm finally done with DC, boycott DC, boycott Tom King, boycott, you know, everything because they finally made f they 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 have blasphemed Christianity. They have blasphemed Jesus Christ. They have blasphemed God. Uh, they have spat in his face and they have made a joke out of Wonder Woman and, and you know, Tom King's uh, writing style and how he has the villain to be like this allegory for Trump and all this stuff. And they, they make fun of Christians. We're going to go over it right now because <sighs> Drew, Kyle, you, you guys and I, we kind of talked about this briefly before the show, but like, this is it's off it's weird it's convoluted and i don't actually know what tom king is trying to say here i Correct. think more than anything i i i'm i i one thing we need to i i for me at least i have to we have i have, I have to acknowledge and realize is that wonder woman is a demigod she does not follow the rules beliefs law structure of catholicism she does right. not she will correct and yeah. I, I can abs and uh, but I will say more than anything else. Uh, this is more about the more about the patriarchal uh, aspect of American life and a woman's role in the household. Yes, if there's one thing that Tom is extremely clear on in this book, 
is he he believes that the f- 40s and 50s the era of the the nuclear family was extremely damaging patriarchal and like toxic right at least that's what he's trying to say in this yeah you hear that kyle yeah you hear that kyle yeah oh, you yeah. and you and amy yeah jeez. this was a dream come true i'm sitting here I'm like this is my life I'm like this feels pretty oh fucking God. good <laughs> no you know who this was this was and steven crowder Got him. Watch it. Watch, Watch it. it. You burn the fucking eggs, you bitch. <laughs> God, this guy was a piece that, of shit. Know, and yeah, uh, so sorry. It. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, oh my that damn video. Um yeah. this, Kyle, I mean, Kyle will tell you, and Amy will tell you, there there are ladies. Out there, still in America today, despite what Tom King th- thinks, who want to have an amazing home, who want to be homemakers, yeah. who want to be mothers. And they love to do that. This is what they wanted to do. And some of them are doing it now. And Tom, for some reason, sees that as a problem. Yeah, they see mm-hmm. it's the man that is pushing the woman into doing that. It's like, ah, uh... no, there are there are women who feel like that is their calling in life is to raise kids and run a household and there should be nothing wrong with that uh yeah no i i can't tell you how many of my female friends and women that you just see on twitter that have fully embraced this like lifestyle where they're like i don't want to be a ceo of a big company like i don't want to go to work and slave for for you know eight hours a day uh to make like a minimum wage and then come home at the end of the day, tired, exhausted. Like, I just want to be home with my family. I want to raise, raise, a, raise a household. Like, I want to tend to my, to my husband and my child. Like, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, like you guys said, I, it's, it can be a really beautiful thing that women like want to aspire to be good mothers. And, and I don't think that that is something that is inherently patriarchal or like, forced upon through oppression you know like it it just seems really heavy well this whole book is heavy handed to like he is as subtle as a jackhammer i think wes said in his video and it rings true in this for sure so yeah it's it's uh playing to the farthest row and past the back row to every fucking dipshit who is probably asleep (laughs) that's not even paying attention say hey did you get it you get it yet it's like I got it on the first <laughs> fucking page, asshole. <laughs> well, that's what's that's what's that, that's what you like, used to say it. Yeah, 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 uh, you, 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 you get it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you get it now? Now do you get it? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jared, thanks for being here, man. Uh, good luck watching Rebel Two, Rebel Moon Two, <laughs> brother. Um, uh, but, second uh, story, yeah, Rebel Moon Two, the second yeah. story. But I this do agree with personal. you. Tom King is a hack. So, um, so yeah, no, it's like, yeah, she, she don't need no man. It, it's so like, even if it was just this page, we'd get, we'd get it right. We're like, okay. Okay. Yeah. So she's a housewife. Her husband is an asshole. Cool. But this is like, this is the entirety of the book. Like he just continues to get like worse and worse and worse. (laughs) Um, I'm going to read some of this dialogue because it's like laughably bad. Laughably. Yes, it is. This is how I would write a comic if I were trying to make fun of this <laughs> style, right? But yeah. Yep. Fuck. Um, for all her bravado, she did not know her true nature. I'm so sorry, honey. The roast not quite done yet. Looks like the recipe said it would only take uh, two hours, but something's gone wrong. Uh, she not she needed to be taught, <laughs> and so the husband goes just like after a long day's work, sitting down having a cigar. He goes, "I guess it's all right, dear, but you did say dinner would be ready by six, and it is important to keep your word." I've uh, I've still got to go out with the boys tonight. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Every trope imaginable. Let's go. Put it in this guy. Oh, man. 
<laughs> and then she's like, I know Sweetums. <laughs> Fuck. I'm like, come on. This is a joke. Oh, this is a parody. God. I should have tested it for you this morning. For the life of me, I don't know what I was thinking. I swear I'm going to be better for you. <laughs> it's just like, so that's just the first page and it's like, oh, here we go. Uh, um how do I how do I uh, sum this up? Like we said at the beginning of the stream, this Wonder Woman comic doesn't progress her character anymore. It doesn't progress the story anymore. We don't know what's going on with the Amazonian, um, what do we call them? Like refugees. Uh, we don't know what's going on with the Amazonian murderer. She, we, we haven't heard from her in like three, four issues. I don't even know what's going on with her. Nope. Um, the sovereign, quote unquote, is the villain. And uh, he's like this Trump allegory. But we haven't actually seen him like do anything to my knowledge. Or is he he's the good one at doing it all? He's good at talking. Yeah, but he has ah. hands on everything. <clears throat> actually, that's a good point. Maybe he's he's pulling the strings. Yeah, so he's the puppet master. Yeah. So the the issue, this comic, um it, Wonder Woman has been captured by the sovereign and is under the spell or under the oppression of the lasso of lies, not the lasso of truth. Correct. Okay. Untruths. Or the untruths. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So she is not speaking her truth. Yep. It's untruths. Um, and so it criticizes Christianity and criticizes like the patriarchy and, and the, the 40s and 50s, like nuclear family. But are they doing it in a satirical manner where it's untruth? Because she's right. So these would be the... lies then, right? Right. That he's saying. Having so her believe... wonder... Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Kyle. No, I I because I, I'm trying to do it in real time as well. Mm -hmm. So they're lie. So is he saying things that are false to then have her believe they're true? Is that, is right. that how this works? Or yeah, or I'm wondering if like because because the sovereign, as we'll read through this book, he's he's um uh stating scripture where it says like, Oh, uh, the apostle Paul talks about that wives must be subject to their husbands as you are to the Lord. Uh, for a husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. And we'll go into that like a little bit later. Cause I have some scripture to read, but yeah, throughout I the whole book, he took that out of context and took everything out of context, not just before and after that quote, which he's a fucking dunce for yes. just pulling one quote out of the fucking Bible and not anything after explaining what that actually means. But the context in which Paul wrote that and the time and everything else and who he was talking to and why he was talking to them in that way. But mm -hmm. none of that. Don't worry about that. Just let me pull this quote out and make it <laughs> fit my narrative because I'm a fucking genius. It's like, oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I'm a fucking edgelord Redditor <laughs> atheist who's like, yeah, oh, God man. is real. This will get them. Um, oh yeah, women, you're so put down by men. Yeah, yeah. and the church, the church, and the Christianity, and the patriarchy. They hate women, and, they yeah. hate you. Um. Yeah. Or like, is he saying that? Because well, yeah, here's the other question: Is it the villain trying to use Christianity as a means to oppress Wonder Woman? But in all actuality, we shouldn't listen to the to the villain. Right, because the because the villain is coming from a place of like evil, nefarious, you know, monstrous. Uh, like he, he's coming at this with a ideology in mind, or with a, a, a what's the word I'm looking for? Like a narrative already. So so he's trying to use Christianity for his own purposes, which is not right. It's like what it. <laughs> what are we, like, what is are he saying things like? that are lies or is he saying things that are truth but turn into lies right. because of the last is she hearing it a certain way yeah. like maybe he's a hero and everything that she's <laughs> hearing 
is the untruth. And he's just like, untruth. no, 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 I didn't know you took everything I said out of context. It's the untruth lasso. I don't know what I, I can't help it. I, fuck. Sure. I, I'm a, I know scripture's good. <laughs> I, I, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. Because, yeah, she says, I do not believe you. When he, so he tells, he says, uh, this scripture that a husband is the head of his wife and Christ, like Christ is the head of the church, just as the sovereign is the head of the nation. Uh, so he's utilizing Christianity to say, because Christ is the head of the church, man should be the head of his wife, just as I am the head of the nation. That's what he's trying to say. And Wonder Woman says, I do not believe you, but she's holding the untruth lasso. So should, so should she actually, is she actually saying, I believe you? Right. <laughs> or is it, I don't believe she's fighting against it. But what right, he was saying, right. the scripture is true. He didn't change the scripture to make that an untruth. Correct. He's, the, the scripture is true. So he didn't change that. But what he added at the end is not true. Correct. So do you get to pick and choose what what is an untruth <laughs> when you talk? I don't even think Tom King knows. <laughs> like, because that would have been interesting, him playing with the scripture and changing the words of Ooh, scripture to yeah. then make it sound more nefarious than it actually is. Cause that would be actually somewhat clever. Yeah. I, I don't know, but he's using it. I, I, Jack, I Jack, you're absolutely right. Kyle and I are giving him way too much credit with this <laughs> yeah. interpretation. Like we're thinking more about this than he did. So. I think so. Fiend says, if I want to read a second rate Alan Moore, I'll just read Alan Moore. <laughs> <laughs> or Stephen Moore. Stephen Moore. Ah, yes, of course. It's, it's a good Stephen Moore. Good Stephen Moore. <laughs> Stephen yes, Moore. My neighbor. <laughs> yep, my neighbor. He's taught me everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nadia. I see you shrimping. So, um, here, back to being a dick again. Uh, last time you, I, I went too rare. I, I thought, I think... <laughs> Tonight, I hope to perhaps uh, I have missed it again. I, I can improve. I promise you, my Steven. My Steven. My Steven. God, Steven Jason. Crowder. You fucking bitch. Oh, oh, wait, it really is Steven. Oh, Crowder. see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And then he just says, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Another excuse. <laughs> another promise. Sure. Okay, fine. I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have said anything. Just chewed for another hour. What's wrong with you? You sick? You're not eating. Uh, well, I, I do need to watch my figure. <laughs> That's so good. As long as no one else is watching it, right? Oh my God. Oh, oh no, there's, there's only you, Stevie. I belong to you. How can you read this and not laugh? I don't understand like how you oh, can read this. And, like, if, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. You like, you, Drew. You are a hundred percent. How is he writing this and being like, yeah, that's good. That's re that's deep. That's really that's that's good. <laughs> I'm so oh. sorry. Oh, this is so. <laughs> this oh. is yeah. It, it reads like a C CW show. What if this is how yeah, Tom absolutely. King actually acts at home with his wife, though? Like, what if he's, oh, actually he's like a total, like a yeah. total <laughs> fucking asshole of his wife? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Josh, if you do cook for us, we we're gonna give you shit for uh, it. Oh, we're yeah. going to uh, remake oh, we this, this book here. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we're yeah. gonna record it. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna reenact this. <laughs> yep, I can't wait. Absolutely. We're gonna be like. Josh, I hope you know that after dinner, I'm going out with the boys. So make sure that you, uh, you know, tidy up after dinner. How about that? Yep. Hey, uh, real quick, <laughs> like, segue. Uh, Matt, yeah. Max, have you watched ever watched the, the Tom Green show on MTV? Oh, yeah, of course. That? This is the Tom you, Green show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you ever see the one where he got that statue of his dad, put it outside the house? Like the, It's like the angry dinner statue. <laughs> like his dad like holding a belt over his head. <laughs> oh my god. I don't think I remember that one. Oh but... I gotta see if I can find it. It is hysterical. <laughs> so he goes, uh, I'm getting going. Pretty sure they got a uh, edible food at the officer's club. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. It's better than this shit. Uh, <laughs> do you know what time you'll be back? I will miss you so very much. 
<laughs> he's, he's just like sick of her. He goes, I don't know, Diana. I'll be home when we're done. What's with all the nagging? <laughs> nag, <laughs> nag, nag. That's all you ever do, Diana. Fucking like whiny bitch. God damn it. God. Ah. Say we'll keep. <laughs> yep. You're suddenly that woman. Oh. <laughs> like, this is real dialogue from a man who thinks that he is so, like, so intelligent. He's like, oh my God, what if Wonder Woman is trapped in this like uh, in this alternate like thing in her head where she can't get free of the sovereign's, you know, patriarchal household, like, you know, nature. She's like trapped in this prison. And, and yeah. he's just like making the like this is a comedy sketch from SNL. This is, I mean, did he bug my phone? This is exactly the conversations <laughs> that I have. This is really weird. You know, I thought okay, of you, Kyle. Okay, so I, I just, so guys, guy. I, I was like, yeah. in our in our group chat, I just put a link to the video on YouTube. It's t- the Tom Green, where's my dinner statue? I, I really <laughs> oh, feel like we should watch that after going through this comic. Because it after, is yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, where's my dinner pitch statue? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, have fun. I have so many chores around here to distract. Oh my God. Yeah. As much as anything can distract me from you, you can't cook and you never knew when to <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> Dude, I can't. I cannot. This is the worst thing I've ever read in my life. But God damn it, you do look all right in that outfit. <laughs> oh, he's like man you can't cook you can't clean for shit you don't shut your fucking mouth you piece of shit worthless uh, but you do look pretty damn sexy in that out like ah, <laughs> uh, i this is who reads this like legitimately any of our detractors read this stupid piece of shit comic book and tell me that the industry is is like in good standing like anyone who comes on here and is like, oh, you just shit on books, read this and and tell me that this isn't the most heavy handed, narcissistic, cynical, stu- like seriously, like low IQ take of a Wonder Woman story ever. It is insulting that people read this and think that it's anything other than garbage, that it should be thrown out. Like this is pathetic. So, yep. Sorry. But yeah. No, you're good. This is honestly hysterically bad. Like, I I don't know if I've laughed so much at a Tom King book before, though. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess this has become a comedy now. Yeah. So. Is that the point? Was he trying to make this funny, do you think? If he or did, that he's giving him too much credit. Like, is he trying to be funny? Like, no, this is a joke. It's supposed to be funny. I don't know. Yeah. Fiend, this is brilliant, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> laughs in 73 (laughs) percent yeah no if he legitimately was like this is gonna be a lot of fun to just like this is gonna be really funny not because we're dunking on chuds but like it's gonna be really funny because like i'm gonna make it so over the top that it's like super hyper unrealistic right i don't think he thought that though Hmm. i thought he's writing this and he's like that's right. Women, you're stronger than that man. Women, you can, ladies, you can do stuff now. Yeah. You can do things now. I'll listen to Steven Crowder when he tells you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, yes, Josh, I believe, or no, wait. Uh, wasn't this uh, David Sampiri or da- Daniel Sampiri? What's his name? Or is it uh, Smallwood? Let's check. Smallcock? Oh. Uh, um, Sam Piri, yeah, Sam Piri, Sam Piri, Sam Piri, bro. How are we not even like th- six pages in? Maybe seriously? <laughs> oh my fucking god! It's yeah. felt like we've gone over the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how how long it takes when you're in this nightmarish hell of being a housewife, Kyle. You uh, should know. Oh, I should know what I do. You, yeah, my, with, oh, yeah, with your wife. Come on, I really need to rethink. How I treat her. Yeah. 
We'll uh, we'll fast track this. Uh, the sovereign is like, do you know why God sent a man to do his job? Do you know why God sent a son to die on the cross? Because he couldn't send a woman. Well, yeah, it's true because a man could do it. So yeah, a woman <laughs> would just complain well, the whole time. Well, I mean, now and, you sound uh, like Steve. Oh, sovereign, uh, uh, Jesus was God. <laughs> you you left out that part. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um. So then he once again quotes scripture, likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair, blah, 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 but with a, a proper for women, pr profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness in all caps. Yeah. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. Yeah. Um. And like, it's like, oh, he's pouring wine oh. over her head. It, it's disgraceful. It's like blood. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. she's like Jesus. Oh, yeah. She's like female Jesus. She's yeah. Like lady Jesus. Better than Jesus. She's, yeah. She's dying for all of our sins. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Dying as a housewife, vacuuming. Uh, yeah, right. So, <laughs> yeah, juxtaposed to her vacuuming, Jesus Christ. I, yeah, that's, that's the same yeah. as crucifixion. So you're, welcome. yeah. I mean, they're they're roughly, yeah, literally the patriarchal. The same thing. Yeah, yeah, they're they're the same. Yep. They are literally the most horrid, like Roman crucifixion torture is yep. vacuuming the house. So, yep. Uh, but I wanted to read this real quick because this is from Ephesians five, and this is what a lot of people take from that verse it in uh verse 22 it says wives submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the lord for the husband is the head of the wife as christ is the head of the church his body of which he is the savior now as the church submits to christ so also wives should su submit to their husbands and everything so most people take that and they go wow that's really misogynistic that wives, that women should submit to their husbands, how dare they? But what they don't include is the verse right before and the verse right after. Uh, the verse right before says, everyone submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Hmm. Everyone submit hmm. themselves to the head of Christ, to, to, to God, everyone submit one another, okay? So then the next, the next one, and this is what everyone leaves out. Mm -hmm. And this is for you, Tom King. This is you in the background. Husbands, love your wives. Wow. Whoa. Love your wives? Wait, just Whoa. as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy cleansing her by, her, by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. So that first part, husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He sacrificed his entire being. He sacrificed everything for, for the yeah. people, for church. So husbands love your wives and sacrifice yourself for her and for Whoa. your family. Yeah, that doesn't wow. fit the narrative. I don't like that part. Can you no. go back to the first part? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, read the woman part again. Read yeah, yeah, read that part. That's the real submit. part. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what he yeah. really meant by that. He didn't, uh, somebody else wrote the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, in this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. Uh, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother, be united with his wife, uh, and the two will become flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of uh, you also must love his wife as he loves himself. So it's like, no, 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 we don't want to talk about that verse. No, no, that Only the first one. Yeah. So, so uh, you're a dipshit, Tom King. Yeah. Here ended the lesson. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. They... Well, back to torture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Back to uh, the torturous life of.
being in a in this hellhole prison that Wonder Woman is stuck in. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So I think she, they're talking about like um, religion here. Uh, prayers are composed of hope as rope is made of sinews. And it's, it's just like all this. Okay. He, like just, it's the, uh, it's more of the pretentious verbiage of just like nonsense. That's like, okay, we get it. Yeah. Um, but she throws the vacuum out. I hate those white fucking boxes Whoa. around that shit. That really <laughs> is so fucking stupid but like, they're comic I, panels god i hate that shit like <laughs> i really do <laughs> um more just more words women uh, should keep silent in the churches yeah women she's like reciting the- scripture <laughs> in her head <sighs> for they are not permitted to speak but should be in submission as the law always says, if there's anything they desire to learn, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. And she, it's like, it's just this. It's that. Okay, yep. we get it. That's the book. All right. Yep. Got it the first time. Got it the first yep, page. Got it. Thank you. Oh, we haven't seen these. The the trinity of wonder they thems. Yeah. And hit the guy right in the dick. Ha <laughs> ha. Got him. Got him. Yeah. Yeah. Got him. And then we go back to the uh we go back to the household. <laughs> <And he's> like <laughs> still stuck here. He's like, uh, I've got to get to work, Diana. Where the fuck are those eggs? Where are the fucking eggs, you stupid, <laughs> dumb, evil bitch. Hey, we, you we, we stupid really, bitch. We, you can't get we, the we fucking really, eggs. <laughs> yeah. We need to watch the Tom Green video after this. We really need to watch it after oh, this yeah. because oh, all yeah. of this is really reminding me of that video now. <laughs> She goes, I know, I know. I'm kind of slow this morning. I couldn't sleep last night. Something kept going through my head. He's like, General Lane's coming in today for an inspection. Going to spend the whole day trying to impress a man who hates everything. Oh, that, a man who hates everything. That's oh, us. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Oh, we're uh, Steve, are you listening to me? These eggs are half burnt. What's wrong with you? <laughs> do you know how much I have to do today? <clears throat> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Is there another fucking thing I have to do? <laughs> Oh, half man. burnt what is that the other half is fine then yeah so she yeah it's like does that mean one egg is is burnt and the other one's not he's very particular about his eggs kyle i was gonna say how do you know they're half burnt yeah these are they all burn or they don't oh. uh, this is a, that's a good that's a good question glenzer i wonder i wonder what he what would happen if he tackled islam maybe we should get some verses from the quran in here because like you know, the Middle East treats women like really well. So they like, do, we should they probably... don't want any genocide of anybody for sure. We know no, that. No, no. So no like, cleansing. actually, you know what? This would be a really great comic. Tom King, I challenge you. Yeah, let's put Wonder Woman in the Middle East and like, she would be treated so much better than in America, dude. Like she would have so much, so many more opportunities. She wouldn't be a slave to anyone. Like she would be able to show her face out in public and wear beautiful clothing all the time. Like she wouldn't be thirsted after over men. There wouldn't be any patriarchy. Like the Middle East is like great for that stuff. So pretty progressive, I would say. Very. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, go fucking do that, Tom. <laughs> I'd like yeah, to see, see you how far that. Yeah. A, you really want to do yeah. this. If you want to do this, you want to go after one of the biggest religions in the world because it's they've been an easy target since fucking forever basically and you feel safe doing it go after some other religions why don't you yeah no i think that'd be that would truly be if you are a really good writer you could tackle other religions and actually put her in places that could you know uh be of interest or as mg says how about she do something that's actually interesting maybe ask some action who knows Instead of a vacuum flying flying through a window and putting (laughs) boxes around it to make it look like action. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, Jack, this is in Diana's head because the sovereign has like put her in this prison, I think, with the lasso of untruth. It is, I think. Does that sound right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like it's... Is he creating this narrative in her head? 
or is she creating it herself in response to what he's saying? Hmm. Yeah. Like, oh, is he man. able to look at that and be like, okay, you're a 1950s housewife. You're <laughs> vacuuming the carpet right now. And uh, you're talking to yourself. And uh, it's like, is he saying that or. Oh, is he the uh, one reading these, the scripture and she's, yeah. Like she's just imagining this in her head, but he's the one that's reciting the. Right. Like, okay, you're over the stove. Like, now you're making eggs and they're half burnt. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Trevor, and your husband really Steve off Trevor. You. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> so I I yeah, I <laughs> guess at some point uh, I think Wes's video talks about how at some point the sovereign actually says like oh I'm using these the scripture just to impose my will or something like that. So like it it does seem that he's doing that for a villainous purpose um, for some sort of like agenda. But the whole housewife thing is very much like Tom King is like, I like my women to step on me, not for my women to be, to be vacuuming. Yeah. I think he's wonder woman in this scenario. He, uh, Oh, okay. <laughs> he, all right. He's the oppressed uh, woman in this. And he's like, yeah. Oh, I love you, dear. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did I burn the eggs again, honey? I'm so oh, sorry. I'm so, I'm so clumsy. I'm so oh, oh, silly I'm all me. thumbs today. Oh, oh silly yeah. me. Okay, sweetie, tweedly dums. Okay, I, I'm so sorry. Oh, and the and the the woman is like, yeah, his his mommy wife is like, I'm hanging out with the girls tonight. <laughs> we're going to, we're going out to a strip club. <laughs> uh, we will you be back soon to cuddle? Maybe if you're lucky, I'll step yeah. on your balls. Yeah, for you. shut up. I don't have time for your fucking dumbass questions. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So, um, so yeah, she's like, she's fighting against the lasso of untruth finally breaks through it, which is like, did anyone doubt that that was like never not going to happen? She's never in actual any danger. No. Like, especially comparatively to this old decrepit, putrid like like nothingness of a man like he's 80 years old he looks like joe biden like yeah. he is worthless he has no strength and we expect him to be like the main villain here of course oh guards guards and finally uh we get the shot that tom king always wanted oh mommy <laughs> Uh, so she then like gets out of this haze, this fog that she was put in, but we're, st we still go back to that world, even though she breaks out of the lasso. So it's right. like, was this just an allegory or a metaphor of what she was experiencing? Yeah. Is it real? That's a great question. Uh, P.S. The house is a little messy, and you're gonna need a vacuum. Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the sun. She puts sunglasses on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You know the song yep. comes in, and you're going to need a vacuum. Again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody say that sucks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're going to need a cleanup on now five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's that's Wonder Woman number eight. I think this may, may have been. This made me laugh the hardest, but I think that the but I think that the issue where they went to the mall is the best one so far. Mm. I laughed almost at every page of this book. I, my, my jaw was on the floor with how, with how, like how badly this was written. I, cause yeah. like you, you're right. I was laughing. Yeah. And yet I know that he's trying to be serious. I hope he's trying to be serious. I hope he was like, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is serious. Like, this is real. Like, I watched Mad Men. I know how Don Draper acted yeah. with Betty. It's like, 
that's that, but a hundred times worse. It's like, what? Uh, what? <laughs> what does that have to do with Wonder Woman? Isn't she fighting somebody? Could she punch something? Yeah, can Wonder Woman actually do something like heroic? Yeah. Like maybe stop the uh, Amazonian refugees or illegal immigrants yeah. from coming in the country or the something. Illegal. I don't know. The illegal yeah. immigrants. Wonder <laughs> Woman should make a, a wall. Make a yeah. wall. <laughs> uh, Jack says nothing's as good when they want or nothing's as good as when they went to the farmer's market. Yeah, that's true. That was Kyle's favorite book from last year. What was that? White oh, Widow man. number two or three or something? White Widow. Yeah. Wheat Widow. Yeah. Wheat Widow. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sorry. So <laughs> Stephanie Minority Home took screenshots of me and she said that uh she said that oh oh shoot i can't pull it up uh but she said i do this so when i'm trying to make a point i don't do this i do okay. like i put the fingers to there and i go like this and i she, don't know if that's she gave me or like, not i don't know what that i means. don't know she said i do do this though she has a picture of me knife handing someone so mm. that's fair interesting Whew, man, I am so sorry that we took like 30 minutes to go Jesus. through that, but more time than he spent writing it. True. Yeah. True. Oh, yeah. That was 36 pages because it was because the backup. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, People want to charge five dollars for this book. Oh my god. Wait, does this have 94 comments on it? Whoa. That can't be right. Whoa. Wait, well, com the oh, redeemed Robin gave it a five stars because the backstory for, for the for the a back. Oh, yeah. Okay. He says the Damien John Lizzie story <laughs> is one of my most favorite ones for both of the boys and all of their comics. These backups continue continue are just so much fun, and seeing the changes in suits they wear is just so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh these may be simpletons. Well, Rock and Robbie uh, liked this issue, so stop. No, he didn't, dude. Oh, I think he did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this <sighs> this was this was good for him. He liked it. We have to watch that at the after party then. <laughs> Kaiser says I have pictures of Max too. Uh -oh. oh, oh. Well, that sounds juicy. Yeah. How? Am am I in my housewife outfit or uh, oh. am I my Wonder Woman now? Uh, this guy says, so I don't despise this issue. Like I don't, I do most of the others in this run. Of course, it's not without its faults, but there were some good things about this. The art is doing a lot of the heavy, heavy lifting. Okay. Uh, this Diana housewife thing has been done a few times before, so it's not the freshest idea. Yeah, you're telling me. Uh-huh. The gender commentary was basic, but honestly, this was to be expected. Uh, ATP at this point, at this point, I was about to say uh -oh. at this moment or at the at the moment. Hmm. Embarrassingly, as someone who likes Sovereign's narration and is religious, some of the dialogue in the middle was lost on me. I don't really understand the point trying to be made of Sovereign's mom laughing at his abuse. And some of the commentary felt rather basic and I didn't love it. He gave this a three and a half stars. Yeah, it sounds like even it's pretty scathing that. at this point. <laughs> I was about to say, that sounds like a one star, a two star. That was more or less what I expected from the previews, which is disappointing. Using Bible verses and a 2D image of a trad wife in lieu of making any more meaningful and nuanced conversation. Hey, that's good. I like that. Yeah. It's a step up in the sense that King has actually acknowledged and dis discussed or. Sorry. And discussion the, the element of femininity in Wonder Woman. Okay. Uh, oh, this guy loved it. Sovereign is a major piece of shit, like in the shittiest way possible. It gets pretty clearly spelled out in this issue that he's the personification of male dominance rooted in the church and state, a.k.a. the man. <laughs> <laughs> And, and damn, damn the man. man. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn the man.
Yeah. Yeah. It was about time. It's about time. Yeah. We got to see how grimy the dude is. I won't lie. I got pretty psyched when Diana busted free and denounced Jesus. Oh my I, God. I don't think that's what she did. <laughs> she wasn't like, Niles, I say no to Jesus. Like, yeah. That wasn't her thing. That's not what that meant. You're wrong yeah. about that. She was like, I won't be I won't be submissive towards the patriarchy. I think that's what he was trying to say. But, okay. But of course the church is patriot. I don't know. He was trying to use the church to cover up his lies, but she never once said, I don't believe in the church. She just said, I don't believe in you. Right. And even if she did say, I don't believe in Yahweh God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Trinity, I would believe that. That's fine. She, she doesn't yeah, have to. Right. She herself is a demigod. And in the exactly. universe of DC, that tracks. Yeah. So, that's so perfectly fine. It's like, okay, yeah. sure, believe whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Um, This was a really interesting comment because I think this kind of sums up where, what we were trying to say a little bit. This guy says, uh, the sovereign represents people who distort the Bible to deceive people. The sovereign represents a liar because he has the lasso of lying. Diana repeatedly says that he is lying and at the end says that this is not her God. Basically, she says there are these are not Christian thoughts. I don't know why people are saying Diana is against right. Christians. Right. But damn, five stars. Five out of stars. Five, dude. Like, no, it's not a five Jesus. star book. <laughs> Just because like all of this is set, like you have to really dig if you're going to analyze this comic and get this out of this. Yeah. You're giving him a lot of runway. Oh, to lot assume lot that he knows credit. what he's doing. Yes. Uh, this is a good point as well. If this arc doesn't end soon, I'm dropping this book. This is not enjoyable whatsoever. And this guy is not worth seven issues of taking up more space than Diana and being extremely uninteresting and obnoxious. This in, this issue says nothing interesting. Most of this stuff, most people are already aware of. And it's not communicated to the audience in any interesting way. It's still two stars. <clears throat> still two, yeah, half star. People, yeah. you can give half stars on this website. Okay. Oh, well. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Oh, sorry. That was close up. Ooh. Oh, hi -oh. King's books are torturous. It is to be expected from a CIA plan. <laughs> but Max had to mention wearing the dress. Ooh. Mm. Uh, Max, I love you. You know that. But you would make an ugly fucking woman. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I would never want to be a woman. Well, we're so all about cool. inclusiveness here so uh i don't want to hear any of that talk yeah so actually josh yeah that's not very inclusive yeah. of you so jesus god so wonder woman is a blunder woman is an absolute well actually it's a skip it but if you want to actually like get a good laugh it's a recommend correct is that it's fair? an asterisk around the skip it <laughs> yeah it's just just a little bit of a, a little caveat yeah come on everybody skip it um, all right. Let's see. Drew, you want to talk to us about Cobra Commander? Because you love you really love that. This has like a perfect score. It should. This issue was action packed from beginning to middle to end. It was full high octane action, and I nice. loved it. I love this. Is my probably oh. I I believe the best issue of the week. <clears throat> all right. All right, that's a bold statement. Over Batmite? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, Cobra Commander has found what he believes to be the place of the Energon, right? Yeah, it's well, it is it, it is an Energon, from what, I, from what I understand. Yeah, it, this, they, they found it, and they're trying to figure out how to collect it, how to get it out, but it, Cobra Commander's found. He's like, all right, we got to get this out of here. 
but someone's there and like, well, he's seen that uh, someone's been working with uh, the Energon doing experiments with it. Then we got our deranged uh, redneck bikers who live in the panhandle near oh, Daytona yeah. just doing their crazy right. shit. And then, yeah, I, and there is so much wild stuff about this book. I don't want to spoil this because you've got to read this to see just how crazy and unexpected this book is. I, mm. I, I love it. I look forward to this every week. I look forward to every Energon book when they come out. Yeah. And this is a great wanna... splash page. Yeah. But yeah, no, every Energon book slaps. Like you look forward to it every week because it just, they, they offer something new or exciting or, or whether it's the art, the story, uh, they're always a lot of fun. So, and I don't know. I, I don't know if it's maybe maybe just me, but you can you guys can let me know. I feel like I can feel the creators having fun making this as well. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, it, you can tell Josh Williamson is having a blast right now, and he yeah. should be. Uh, so yeah, Cobra Commander has found out that this guy has been working with the Energon, and what he's able to do is instead of create more Energon, he's able to expand the Energon that he currently has into larger forms that take on like different, or not different properties, but a more powerful property. So he like, you know, does a little mock-up test, feeds it to these like animatronic, these uh, little cy cybernetic bug buggy things. Um, and he says that it doesn't just power them, it supercharges them into a force unlike anything on Earth. So uh, Cobra Commander, f have, having found this now, is like, well then, this is my jackpot. Because now I don't have to do anything. This guy did all the work for us, right? But yeah. he's not getting out of here without a fight. Because oh. uh, <laughs> I did like this little back and forth where they're like looking at each other and he tries to like walk this way and he's like, just walks right next to him. He's like, nope, sorry, you're not moving. <laughs> what are you doing, you imbecile? Move! And uh, to find out, this guy was not, in, in fact, his bodyguard, but he was waiting until uh, Cobra Commander found the Energon uh, to then kill him. At least that's what I gather from this. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that tracks. Okay. Uh, but Cobra Commander is not without his own tricks up his sleeve, literally up his sleeve, because once he's at his wit's end, he utilizes those same little robotic buggies to make like a solar Iron Man beam. Yeah. That just blasts straight through this dude. So awesome. Yeah. And we find out that Destro is the one who is buying all this energon from uh, from these hillbillies. So there we go. Yeah, but yes, yeah, so have fun, dude. You read you read this right, Max? Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, like this was close. If I think this might be my pick of the week as well. Like it's this was so fun every issue i have no idea what to expect when you think you do it's mm. there's always something in here a little curveball that gets thrown in here that's just like oh that is so fucking cool like i did not expect that and the dialogue is so fun and cobra commander is the character you love to hate like mm. he's he is just like and he always is a few steps ahead when you think He's getting his ass kicked and he is. It's like, okay, but I'm still going to beat you. Yeah. Like, this was all part of my plan, sort of thing. And I love the part where his helmet gets knocked off and, like, oh, yeah. I was like, God, your face is all <clears throat> fucked up. <laughs> like, and oh, yeah. to, like, cover up his face. And, like, I just, he's like, man, your face looks like, like a bag <laughs> yeah. of, like, throw up or something or vomit. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. And then they tie it in like these little Autobot things here. It's just like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. Yeah. I like where this is going. So, no, this this issue was so fun. This whole series has been awesome. Every issue has just been an absolute banger. So, this was, I think, I think my pick of the week. Okay. I have to double check and make sure, but I'm, I think this was. 
I will say there was only one other book that I enjoyed more than this in World's Finest, but it was from last week. So I may oh. be cheating a little bit, but you can't say Nottingham. What? You can't say Nottingham. Nottingham came out last week. That doesn't count. But but I didn't read. I wasn't here last week. I didn't read it last week. So I'm gonna that bring it matter. In <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I uh, I read this book that came out 20 years ago today. So that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What if my LCS only got it this week? Then it then it's this week. Then it's you know my pick of the week. Pick of the week doesn't count. Sorry. Week. No. Pick of the week. Uh, I don't know. So <clears throat> I will agree with Cobra Commander. His his title in particular, uh, I never know what to expect. Like I'll I open I crack open the book and I'm like, anything could happen at this point. Which is fun, which is a lot of fun, because you you really don't know what 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 may happen. I, maybe it's just I don't have a particular affinity towards Cobra Commander, but I like Duke, GI Joe, and Transformers like way more. So I, I liked the issue, but I think I I just I think I would like it more if I knew more about Cobra Commander. So okay. Yeah, it's just fun seeing this from a a villain's perspective because normally with Cobra Commander, it's just kind of like, all right, he's in the background, he's nefarious, he's evil, he's all evil sort of thing, evil guy, and we'll give him a few panels to kind of do some stuff. But this, actually seeing him in his own element, in this thing, like having to struggle, and it's not just given to him, and he's, you know, he's going through the ringer. He's getting his ass kicked. But yeah, man, he's winning. He really does. But he's getting his ass kicked. So you can't you can't help but kind of like, damn, I'm still kind of rooting for him. Like I still yeah. want him to kill all these fucking hellbillies. But like, even on even in the last issue, he was getting his ass handed to him, and then in mm-hmm. this issue, he gets his ass ass handed. Yeah. So you're you're like you said, you're rooting him for him just for the sake of the fact that he does not give up. He just keeps. He's ten, uh, tenacious. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Very tenacious. He's a lot like Nemesis, also. Where it's like, yeah, you should hate this fucking guy, the worst yeah. person on the planet, but you want to kind of see him succeed. <laughs> like, I can't help it. For sure. You're kind of like, I want him to get this energy on. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I want you're like, what is he going to do with it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But speaking of tenacious, he's very much like Darren from Kramerica Industries. He's going to help uh, Kramer ah. get that. Job. Yeah. This is true. Um, the Great America. <laughs> Maybe oh, it is man. Darren. Maybe Cobra Commander is Darren. Who knows? Wow, could you imagine that villain arc? Incredible. Ooh. Uh, Mr. Kramer would like to schedule a meeting for noon. <laughs> uh, Aaron Sparrow says, Oh, Max, I will educate you on Cobra Commander. Good, good. Please. I will welcome the Yeah, I will <laughs> I will welcome that for sure. Oh yeah! Did you guys watch the trailer for Transformers One with Chris Hemsworth? I, I what? heard things. I, I heard things. Oh. I heard things. Oh, Chris, heard I heard things. things. What things, Drew? Uh, what things do you speak of? That it's. Uh, I heard that it's uh, kind of for little itsy bitsy kids. Oh, that the subject matter is that is that of teeny boppers and like not even teeny boppers. We're talking like. Sh- bed shitters yeah oh no <laughs> so people who watch the despicable me minions movies that's how young these kids are there yes there you go yeah oh um, i don't know what this is i've never heard of it i this is the first i'm hearing of it is it it's is a it an new, animated movie mm-hmm. i guess it's or an, an animated show movie yeah oh. it's like a c, c- I think it's, yeah cgi thing yeah Chris Hemsworth's in it. Hmm. He's he's make or not Megatron. He's uh, Optimus as a voice. Yeah, but he's not. He's physically not in the movie. No, because it's all animation. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I was so. like, Chris Hemsworth <laughs> is in a Transformers movie. What the fuck? He's is playing going on? Shia LaBeouf's character. Yeah, Sam like, Witwicky. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Sam Witwicky's a six foot four <laughs> fucking jacked monster. <laughs> That would be hysterical. Uh, I would actually watch it. Yeah, that would actually be good. Uh, 
yeah, Megan Fox is there for some reason yeah. again. But yeah. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, wait, let's go here. Uh, all right, so yeah, Cobra Commander, you guys are putting it as your pick. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Um, I will say I thoroughly enjoyed it. Not my pick of the week, though. Surprisingly, so it has to be. It can't be anything from last week. What if I put World's Finest in front of Cobra Commander? You wouldn't dare do such <laughs> things. What if I had more fun with World's Finest? You would be lying. Hmm? How? How? I don't buy it for a minute. <laughs> because I know those characters. I don't. I don't really know Cobra Commander. Max, you're obviously lying. Anybody can see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh transformers one is the origin of how they got there oh does anyone want to watch that yeah, that sounds really stupid <laughs> yeah how the, yeah no one we're done with prequels hollywood get it through your part. thick skull no one wants prequels or re reimaginings or rehashings or re you know whatever is this just going to be on Disney Plus or what? Is this an actual thing? Uh, I don't know where it's going to be. Who owns the rights to Transformers franchise? Is the I question. Yeah. Hasbro. Hasbro Plus. Mattel. Uh, Plus. Mattel Plus. Yeah. Now we're cooking with gas. Uh huh. They're making a Monopoly movie. They made a Barbie movie, so now they're going to do Monopoly. They're going to do sense. Candyland. Yeah, produce. produce. By Margot Robbie, yeah, yeah, she's playing. She's playing the thimble. <laughs> she is short and fat, and those make sense. Wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I read. I read. Unfortunately, I did read this, and you guys would Oof. not believe. You guys would not believe me if when I told you. If I well here, watch this. So if I get rid of my rating, can I get rid of it? Uh I think it will go back to a hundred percent. This was a Whoa. this was rated a perfect comic. That's like, impossible. This afternoon when I when I went on here, I finished reading it and I was like, that was terrible. And before I give my rating, it was at a hundred percent. I I don't I, see. I, this is the yeah. most unlikable character ever, I would say. She is the most unlikable <laughs> fucking character ever written by anyone. I concur. Yeah. She is an absolute insufferable, know-it-all, whiny, obnoxious, annoying, arrogant, egotistical, stupid bitch <laughs> that I have ever read. And I, I wanted like so many bad things to happen to her like literally right here at this dinner like her just interrupting people and just not shutting the fuck up and not listening to a single thing anybody's saying i was just like i really hope you get lou gehrig's disease like i oh really God. want you to just to fucking have like a horrible and that life just, and that's just that it's it's another example of someone treating like the past, like it's modern day in conversations, mm. like yeah. people would actually do this to each other back in their 1900s, 1800s. No, this would never fucking happen. No, no, no 20 year old woman would just be in here barking orders, yelling at everybody, throwing this whole table, flipping this whole table at, yeah. over. Just wait. It gets worse. Yeah. She gets so mad. Look at the, it's like, Come on. There is no redeeming qualities to our so-called protagonist. Like, is she supposed to be our protagonist? Yes. And I, like, I don't understand what her motivation is. So here's what I gather. <clears throat> she seems to be stuck within this, house and her father grandfather is the writer of this fictional character that is supposed he's supposed to be robert e howard and the character that he wrote is supposed to be conan are we still like that's that's the premise right 
Yeah, or like a John Carter or Mars or something. There you go. Yep, absolutely. And this is the daughter of him. And she is like the most spoiled, arrogant, egotistical, narcissistic. You said all the things, right, Kyle? You mentioned all like the. And so this woman is like her caretaker to make sure that she stays out of trouble. So they take her to this mansion, which is supposedly the father's mansion. And he shows up and is like, now I'm going to take you on an adventure. And that's it. That's the comic book. Yeah. Right? Because at the end of the book. Well, she's a drunk as well. Don't let me forget that. Yes. Um, She is like messing around with all of her father's uh, like antiques. She tries to like have a sword fight with the caretaker. She's like throwing shit. She's ruining the house. She's like, yeah. But then at the end, he's the dad's like, all right, I'm going to take you on one of my adventures. Yeah. It's like, what has she done? To where you would want to spend more than five seconds <laughs> not beating the ever living shit out of her fucking face to where she literally couldn't talk anymore. Like, I want to punch her in the oh face so hard to where she has to have her fucking jaw wired shut oh for the rest God. of her fucking life. And it's just so it's like, you see what happens? <laughs> like, wow. there are consequences for your actions. It's an example of a, of a character or a, or a kid who's never ever been uh punished never yeah and then so gets rewarded as. somehow it's like oh you're standing up to authority good for you young lady it's like shut the fuck up <laughs> like I, 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 I you know what you know what kyle i think she needs to be put in her in that wonder woman book so that there you, uh, go. you know she can see what it's like yeah no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> But Take no, you it, back it, and I can show you what it's like. <laughs> it just, <laughs> I, I just, I don't feel any emotion or, or like, uh, I, I don't get pulled into this book or this universe. Like this, this art, like this page, if this were just artwork, it would be beautiful. Like the rendering of the house and like h- how beautiful that is with the detail, the clouds, how they do, how he does the, uh, the structure of like, um, of the fields and, and the people and like everything is very beautiful to look at, but the contents of the, the characters that are here are just like despicable, deplorable. Like no, th- there's no one that I can gravitate towards is like anyone I want to read about. Right. So. And I, I brought this up before. It was a stupid ass show on HBO called The Gilded Age. It's oh, basically that's right, yeah. it's basically downtown Abbey, New York, circa 1890, who gives a fuck? And it's like <laughs> that's kind of what this is in the sense that it's a time and place where you have women, girls becoming women, and then you have a governess who kind of over oversees these young women who you know, eventually become older women and get married and everything. And it's like, you look at everything that happened back then and the the way they went about doing anything in their day-to-day lives and they couldn't walk outside without being accompanied by somebody. Otherwise, it's like, oh, it's seen as scandalous. It's like, you want to oh, yeah. take that and run with it where you have a, a woman who necessarily doesn't agree with those norms and wants to be different. That's fine. There's a way to do it. And... Tom King is not subtle enough to be able to do that. He has to hit you over the fucking head with the most obnoxious <laughs> character, woman or man. Even if a, yeah, a, oh yeah. a, a if a little if a young man was acting like this, just as obnoxious. It's like no, this kid needs to have his shit kicked out of him. <laughs> like, I, oh, I just yeah. don't understand this. That's a really good point. I think that we get a lot of we get a lot of shit from people who are like, you know, man you guys are just misogynists or men. You guys just hate it because it's a woman. And, and it's like, if, if a man, or like you said, if, a, if there were a young son, if the son of this like rich, uh, you know, writer or whatever were to act just the same way as this woman did, he's the, the son is just as deplorable, just as awful, just as, as abhorrent of behavior. It doesn't excuse him regardless of his gender. It's just, 
she happens to be a woman and she happens to be one of the most despicable beings <laughs> in the in the yes. world. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, yeah. you can't have a character beat the shit out of her. Whereas if it was a boy, at least this guy could kick the shit out of him <laughs> and say, grow up and start acting like a man. <laughs> yeah. But that's what the governess is supposed to be for. It's like, no, I'm teaching you how to be a woman. And she's like, I don't want to be a woman. I want to be a man. And da, 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 all that <laughs> crap. It's like, okay, fine. We get this. We get this shit. But it, it's just tell it somewhere else. And the, and the governess isn't even trying to be like, she's not trying to be like, as a proper woman, you will give two blowjobs to your man a day. It's like, she's <laughs> right. not trying to do that. She's just trying to be like, hey, how about you have some fucking manners every yeah. now and then? How about like, you not yell really... and cuss and scream and <laughs> yell and throw shit and not about, be drunk every five seconds? Yeah. Man. How about you don't be a drunk idiot, a drunken, <laughs> like, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, like a, when you're, oh, I can't, I, my, my mind keeps, keeps blanking on me. When you're a disgrace, like stop being a disgrace to your family, like bloodline. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, she is. She's just like, nothing about her is noteworthy or interesting so yeah unless you can pull the biggest like character arc in this where she comes to become the most redeemed character on the planet which mm -hmm. i highly doubt mm -hmm. I, I everyone's just supposed to fall in love with her automatically and be like yeah we love it yeah stick <laughs> it to the man fuck you Woo! it's like actually i'm no i'm really curious as to why people do like this Despite the familial trauma and shouting drama, this is such a cozy book. <laughs> Looking forward what to more of the that fantastic. <laughs> it's like what you can grab hell? a cup of coffee, start a fire, snuggle up next to your favorite cat and like, you know, read it. Get, get weird in that Snuggie while you're reading this. Yeah. yeah. This is the perfect book for Bilquis Evely. Every page is a gorgeous as the last. No notes. It's really just a pleasure to be able to see her art. Uh, Tom King is crafting a story that has me really intrigued and is building up to something epic. What? What? It, what? No? What is he building up to? Yeah. I, who are the characters? Why are Why are they there at the mansion? What are they going on a grand journey for? What, like, yeah. We know nothing yeah. about the universe. We know nothing about the characters. Everyone yeah. is shrouded in mystery. Like another yes. creator we know. Uh-huh. All of these are about Evelyn's art. It's see what it seems like. Everyone seems to like the art here. <laughs> yeah. Are they reading? Here's another one. Uh, Bilquis Evely. No, Evely's art is absolutely sublime. Bilquis' art is fantastic. No one's reading this book. They're all just <laughs> looking at it. Huh. Weird. Oh, gosh dang it. I'm my criticism, Tom King. But when he cooks... He cooks. What does that even mean? It's not a review. That's not a review of anything. That's He's gibberish. Not yeah. What What is he cooking? He's not telling you a story about anything. <laughs> Ugh. Pathetic. Drew, did you like that book? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I told you just... not to read it, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> It's it's amazing, honestly, it, how Tom King has his loyal sycophants who will continue to blow him, regardless of the written word in his books. It, it it's, yeah. it's a miracle that he has this many fans that be in this whole this stuff. It's like, yes, these are true, amazing, great works of heroism. It's it, you people are sick. You people do not know how to read. <laughs> You're sick in the head. Get some help. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know what's... Now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Go get help. Yeah, it's a know... Michael Jordan commercial. <laughs> exactly. You know what? I, yeah, I should have listened to Michael Jordan because I, I I read two Tom King books this, this week. Not this month, this week. Mm -hmm. um, but The Only Cure was my number one book of the week this week. My pick of the week. Doesn't count. Nottingham, number <laughs> 11. Holy about shit. This you want to talk about a strong female character done correctly. Amazing, yes. Hmm. This first, this, 
these look like European comics, dude. Like, look yeah. at this first page. King Richard the Lionheart with his crusaders. Like, this looks amazing. And the story is like, so detailed and there are so many moving pieces sorry i, I feel like i'm talking like uh rock and robbie you are um <laughs> you going i, I am else? actually a little adjectives bit. more adjectives more adjectives <laughs> come on but no dude this was seriously like this was everything for me this made up this makes up weeks of bad comics when you get a good comic like this first of all the cover is freaking gorgeous awesome but when you get a book that looks like this and actually feels like it is set within 1192, where it, it just has this grimy medieval type of, um, uh, I don't know, grittiness to it. Uh, like it feels, it feels just, real. It, honestly, it, it all yeah. looks real. I mean, that's what it feels like I love about it. Yeah, yeah. it's lived in. It's a very, definitely. Lived, very. Yeah, you just said it, lived in world. Yeah. And, and this art when style. I, so when I, yeah. Oh, sorry. Real you, quick, you, I brought this up with I brought this up with uh, Wes um, on Thinking Critical last Saturday. How um, when this when the previous volume ended. Uh, the people they had all thought they're gonna they're they won they've taken over they're gonna get everything it's amazing they've taken power it's about time and we get back and they learn the truth it's like oh hey you know what maybe you're not gonna get everything you want maybe those who who had the power are gonna continue to take everything maybe they were just luring you on for a ride you know it's like I saw it as like a good allegory for like say like a Black Lives Matter movement. You know, people who say like, mm. yeah, we're for the people. This is all for us. It's all for the people. We're going to get what's right for us. But um, we're going to take some, several hundred million dollars. And we're going to buy some mansions while you guys are uh, oh. separating out here. Yeah. Aren't the Merry Men like terrorists? Yeah, like, they are. They are terrorists. Yes, they are terrorists. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they are 100% terrorists. Like, yeah, Robin Hood is no an mistake. absolute terrorist. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, what's interesting is how they did uh, King Richard the Lionheart and Robin Hood because they are on the way to sack Nottingham. Like they are on the way yes. to massacre yep. everyone, um, which I thought was a kind of an interesting take. I, mm, I understand that this is fantasy. So I realized that the verisimilitude there is not because like Richard the Lionheart would not be here during this time. He was in Jerusalem during this like his reign so like he would have been in the middle east but to kind of escape to this nottingham universe uh, i can i can get there so yeah, absolutely great. you find out that they were they torched down loxley and they're going yeah. after oh, and marion yeah. has no idea what's coming next and it's like do we trust you know the former sheriff here and it's like what what, what are we gonna do i mean she is she is die a fucking bollicle in this like she Ooh. is such a psychopath like yeah. it is so good like her character i mean it's she has written so well you could easily see this as oh another slay queen coming in here but no like she's thinking she's playing like 40 chess but it's like you you have no idea what the big picture is that's coming for you they're coming here to fuck you up yeah <laughs> like you have no she idea she thinks that she's big dick, you know, yes. and and the sheriff of Nottingham is like, despite our differences, like, I know we have this back and forth, but like, you have to believe me, you are going to get fucked by King Richard. <laughs> like they are coming here, like you said, to kill you. And when they look outside, they think that it's snowing and they realize that it's not, that it's ash <laughs> and that they have burned all the surrounding cities. Like this is. I was reading this today and I was like, it, it just made me so happy. I was like, this book is so good. Yeah. Like, uh, and, oh, an actual yeah. comic book. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. I haven't read one of those in a while. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, you're right. She's diabolical. She's thinking on a different level. <clears throat> She's using uh, Little John as kind of like a pawn. Because I think the Sheriff of Nottingham even says at one point, he's like, 
the people believe that little John is in, in control. Mm-hmm. Right. But like, she's the one who's actually pulling the strings. Um, but she's, she's manipulative. She's using her, her beauty to get what she wants. You know, she's using her intelligence to manipulate other people. She's very well done and she's intimidating. Like she is actually legitimately powerful to where if she were to say like, Oh, I'm going to take over Nottingham. You believe her. You're like, Oh shit. Yeah. She is going to do that. Yeah. She's like Cersei Lannister from game of Thrones. Yeah. Like, Yep. It's really, she's kind of the one calling the shots. There may be a king or there may be somebody else there, but we all know who's who's pulling the strings here. And it's yeah. her. And she's a psychopath, like Cersei Lannister was. Mm-hmm. Last yeah, couple seasons. So. Mm, yeah. But yeah, no, this was like this was the only thing I was like, side, side shaved head, come on, fuck off. This this book is like perfect. It's like 9.8 out of 10. Because of this, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I was like, no one would have this haircut. No, but, uh, but no, he gets kind of double crossed. I am just blown away by this art. Like, yes, every page I want hung up in my room, and I know I say that a lot with some of the like Transformers books or like whatever Dan Morris stuff, but like, seriously, this is like, this art actually looks like he painted this shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, He has a very, very unique art style, how he does the nodding or the sheriff of Nottingham where it's sprayed ink. Yeah. Ink uh, splatter across him. Even in this panel does the same thing. So just, Yeah. It adds a level of style and and I don't know, just like this artistic nature that you don't see anywhere else. Yeah. Well, these guys are musicians. These guys are rock stars. They're always traveling, playing stuff. It's like they kind of just do this sort of thing on the side. Which is wild to me. Like I would picture this guy slaving over this art for like years. Yeah. But... It is like, yeah, same Keith, yeah, for sure. Uh Slavic, I agree. Um she did the so, yeah, it was the one shot. Like I, I get it, but it was it wasn't the main. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm upset about because I actually took the Nottingham series off my pull list, but I didn't realize that Tales from Nottingham was a side story. Yeah. So she did this one, and of course, this is like the character that she wrote. <laughs> Yeah, and look at the terrible fucking art they gave her. So oh, it's like, yeah, okay. Sh- there you shitty, go. yeah. Yeah. It's, look at look at it's like, oh, <laughs> okay. They gave her this book with this artist. God. Very it. cool. Very cool. Very cool. And then look at that. Yeah, it's like yeah, okay. it, night night and day difference. I hope those horses Oof. aren't aren't 3D assets. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, there is literally that, that one. That one, it, mm. the face. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, this building is for sure just a plug. Like he just grabbed that and he just dropped it in here. Yeah. Look, I mean, uh. all all the intricate details and the the guardsmen up top in their silhouettes, um, and the angle at which we're looking at the castle. This is a total three D asset can tell yeah <laughs> even you can even see through to the other side to all the other buildings that are three 3d assets at, as well all the little towns folk yeah shut the front door mg sell you it to me right now. god damn it MG. I'll pay, how much do you want you for are. it 2k 4k give it to me <laughs> what page do you have i don't care i'll take it Just <laughs> sell it to me pay, name your price I'll Name your price, it. man. <laughs> Keep all your gunslinger shit. I don't care. Give. <laughs> I want Nottingham art. <laughs> uh, I've never seen any of it. How the hell did you find? I've never seen. Yeah, right. Like, how would you? Oh, uh, that would just that would make my whole entire. I want to meet these guys. I really do. They seem really cool. Like they yeah. seem. 
super passionate about their their craft. You yep. can tell. What up, Omega Man? Glad you could be here. <laughs> Josh says, yep, sounds like a woman to me. That's fair. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, MG, funny enough, I actually went to the book last week, which is so sad because it's all the way down here, dude. Like no one is picking this thing up. When did like, the more... last issue come out, though? Ooh, two years ago? It's felt like it's been my entire life since the last issue came <laughs> out. Since I was one years old. Yeah. But it's got a perfect score, 100%. Good. And then look who it is. There's our man. He says, love having the series back. Fantastic opening issue, setting up the final arc of the series. SCV's art has improved so much over the series, and this 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 issue doesn't disappoint. Agreed. Concur. Um. So yeah, Nottingham number six, page twelve. All right, boys, look it up. Nottingham number six, page twelve. Page twelve. One, two, three, four, five, nine, ten. Is it going to be a splash page? Eleven. Ooh. Oh. Okay. So this is twelve. Am I right? With the king, well, is this the one? Uh, well, is this the I one? I'm counting. I was trying to count the little breaks in the page here. Yeah. Oh, that's such an awesome page. The the, yeah, at the bottom there. I like. I like this. That, that's, that's cool. Awesome. Whew. All right, MG. Don't don't you know? No need to flex that hard. Come on, dude. Andy has the cover for Nottingham number one second print. Ooh, okay. Wait, what's that? Hold on. I need this. Because wait, Kyle, that. you have issue number like issue number one one. Yeah. I had two of them at one point. Oh, Do I still have two of them? them? Son of a bitch. I might have two. Yeah. If you want one, I can give you one of them. Oh, I'll, I'll buy it from you. What are they still? A hundred bucks? I have no idea. I have to check. They, get, I, they still gotta be. I don't but know. But yeah, this thing, I remember this being on every top to every top 10 list <laughs> uh when this thing came out only a 93 you got to bump those numbers up those are rookie numbers those are rookie numbers all right nottingham third printing uh ooh ooh okay is oh it is SCV. Dang. Oh this wow. is okay. This is way cooler than that interior page. Sorry, MG, but like, yeah, this one is whew. That's dope. That's legit. My comic shop has it for 160 for a number one. Wow. Ooh, what's what's the grade though, Curzon? Yeah, I was gonna say, is it graded? 160 sounds really fucking high. For a raw? Raw dogging for 160? Yeah, that sounds way too high. Hang on a sec. Should we ch should we check the eb ebay? eBay? The ebay? The e the e uh, the e the e of bays? Yeah. Nine Nottingham Juan. Rottingham. Rottingham number one. <clears throat> oh, what what is this oj why am i getting oj cards on here and jim otis nottingham one cgc uh maybe i should go to sold what is I, all this junk there have to be someone's got to be selling there's a nottingham number one that was the uh no but we need we want like cover a like Number There's one, cover A, first printing. You know what? Maybe I maybe I typed it in wrong. Nottingham, 
one first print. First print. <clears throat> Number three. Now. Uh, there you go. Well, first print. First I'll print. Same from the UK. Or best offer. Yeah, from the UK. Uh. Okay. Once again, man, a lot from the UK. Wonder why. I mean, this does actually feel more like a European comic than a American comic. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, it's you know good. <laughs> so. Man, another another first printing from the UK. What the hell is going on here? Oh, here we go. There's not, there hey, we go. you know what? Forty dollars. Six. That's six about shipping. right. 40 bucks 40. Is about right. all right well this thing one... dropped because yeah it used to be i think i paid 60 for mine maybe that's pretty good comparatively to like i said i saw this for 100 120 150 oh look at these fingerprints though you see that uh Hold on. Ugh, disgusting oh. On the black oh, cut right can't here. Get a, oh, no. It's an automatic 8.5. You can't yeah. use Nah. Nah. Ugh. Gross. Get out of my Deuce sight. Bag. <laughs> Fuck are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and then this douchebag just put up a like a, That's a picture from photo. online. It's a fake yeah. photo. Gosh dang it. <laughs> Jesus. You know what, Kyle? I'm just gonna buy yours. Yeah. This one's 50. I don't. I don't know. I don't well, see any when, finger tippies. When we when we do our uh, backstage access pass, I'll yeah. I'll run in back there and I'll see if I can. I, I I did have two at one point. I don't know if I still have two. I know okay. I have one. If you have a second one, let me know. I may. Okay. I may let you know. If not, I'll just send you the one I have and I can buy another one. <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not happening. I'll just buy one of the like this one's fifty bucks. It's yeah. Perfect. It's fine. Bet. Bet. Uh, lately, YouTube has been recommending me videos of people shitting all over CGC's credibility. Um, that tracks, Jack. I mean, I've seen a lot of content creators who have been sucking at the teat of CGC now coming out being like, this ain't it, chief. So, because mm. remember, we did that show where we actually watched the dude crack the case. Yeah. And then seal it back up. So, but but CBCS just got in some hot water about Ooh. somebody who bought a nine point nine old label CBCS Spider Man twenty ninety nine, and wanted it reholdered with with the new CBCS label, and so they did. They cracked it up. They re we're going to reholder it, and it turns out the book. Shouldn't have even gotten a 9.8. They cracked it. So he spent like 12 or 1300 bucks on a 9.9 Spider-Man 2099. Reholder. They got it. They cracked it. Shouldn't have even been a 9.8. And they, CBCS then decided to then press it themselves, get it to a 9.8, send oh. it back to the guy. And oh. said, hey, we're sorry. We regret to inform you. This book shouldn't have even been graded a 9.8. At the time, we then decided to press it. it we got it to a 9.8. We apologize. And uh, the guy was super pissed. And <clears throat> um, because of some other YouTube people, they uh, CBCS then made it right. And they did give him fair market value, the additional for what it would have been if it was a 9.9. .9. But that's super shitty. You just get a reholder and then they decide, okay, it's not going to get a 9.9, .9, but then we'll press it, quote unquote, press it to get it to a 9.8. Right. So it's like, well, we couldn't get it to where it was, but we're going to help you out and we're going to press it for you. Yeah. Just so we, we can... assumed that's what you wanted. You couldn't put it, back in the nine point like you couldn't say 
hey, if you go ahead with this, just so you're aware, it will mm. not get a 9.9 again. Then you right. would just be like, no, I want my fucking book back. Don't touch it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they didn't even like, they didn't even ask. They just did it. They just yeah. did it. They just cracked it open and were like, oh, mm. shit. Yeah. yeah. There's a communication error there. Yep. That's for sure. Uh, so, yeah. So, CBCS is... This, so, now they're in hot water, you said. Correct. Which when they shouldn't have been like yeah. now is the time, but they need I to mean, capitalize on CGC's yeah. low point, right? Downfall. They should have, but uh, yeah, lots of, I, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. If, if you want to do collectibles right now, it's all in original art. I, I think, I, I don't think it should be in uh, graded books anymore. There's just no way. Yeah, and you know the same thing with the sports card market. They're they're dealing with the same thing with people trying to scam the system. Now their their restoration and everything else is completely different from comic books, from what I can gather. But yeah, they're they're having some issues as well with people trying to scam the sh hmm. holder bullshit. So it's all over the board. Hmm. <clears throat> Jack Frost says, I've never liked or trusted CGC. Uh, you know what's so funny? When I first started getting collecting into comic books, I remember, I think I've told you guys this, I went to a convention and I asked one of the vendors and I said, hey, I, I see that you have a ton of really great raw keys. Do you have any graded books? And this dude went off on me. I was like 20, early 20 somethings. And he's like, fuck cgc like he was so mad at me for for asking if he had graded books and he's like you tell me something what do i look like a guy who'd have a graded book in my fucking thing i have more self-respect than that because those fucks they grade everything blah blah and i was like oh my god i was like i, I didn't know i'm so sorry so from that moment on was really my like awakening to go like maybe this graded thing is kind of a scam but I don't know. It might be, but it prevents assholes like that from being like, "Oh no, this book's uh this book's a 9.8." So uh, oh, yeah. uh that's why you give me this much money for it. And I'm like, "Well, I think it's an 8." Well, I think it's a 9. So you give me this much money. Fuck you, piece of shit, dumbass moron. Uh yeah. how long have you been around books? I've been around books my entire life. I fucking know what a 9 <laughs> looks like as opposed to if I get but from a very fine well, fine plus, fine plus minus. It's like Dude, it just, sounds like you were there with me at the convention. That's wild. Yeah, you get those fucking yeah. cocksuckers that just want to get more money at it. It's like, look, I'm not going to haggle with you like I'm in some Indian market here for four hours over the price of a book. <laughs> That's what grading does help, at least. Mm. That's yeah, I true. do agree, MG. Uh, the only thing I'm pissed off about <laughs> is that CBCS did that shit without his knowledge. Like, they just went ahead did that pressed it and then told him later like they didn't say hey before you do this we looked at the book preliminarily before we even cracked it out and you're not going to get a 9.9 .9. what do you want to do yeah that's that's tough I, I wish i knew more about the grading industry but yeah that sounds shrouded that sounds in mystery brutal. yeah just like the creator that we're going to talk about right after this show, uh, <laughs> which is a great segue for us to move into our after party. So for the members, for those of you who are members, come hang out with us. Uh, it'll actually start probably in the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, so we're going to head over to the after party after this. We're going to be going over and reviewing individually each docu document, document, doc, document. Dakuman. Uh, card, Dakuman, Dakuman uh, mm. cards, and uh, it should be a blast. So we're going to look at that. Uh, we're also going to maybe watch Rock and Robbie. We'll see. Oh, we have to. If we have time. Yeah, <laughs> we have to. Um, What's his pick of the week? I don't remember. Oh, it was uh, it was uh, Cobra, Cobra Commander. That's right. Okay. So he actually right. he had a good pick. I'm surprised he did not do Helen of Windhorn. Well, so. he does love that fucking book too. He really does like that one. <laughs> so uh, I have a copy of Spider Man 29 City sitting unbagged in a box with a bunch of other. <laughs> hey, I like Spider Man 29. Not a gimmick. You bite your tongue. Yeah. Miguel O'Hara is cool, man. Yeah. All right. 
And that was a fun series. Mm-hmm. You should at least bag and board it. Come on, man. Yeah. That's that's okay, worthy that. of a bag and board. Uh, <clears throat> so I didn't mention this earlier, though. I, I was going to mention this at the beginning of the show, but I totally forgot to. Um, chat, if you guys are still with us towards the end of this stream, or if you guys are watching this later, um, it has that hollow foil. Hollow foil is great. It's wonderful. What are you talking about? I love it. It's my life. Just, yeah, that's that's my whole existence. I want hollow foil and everything. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I forgot to tell everyone, but uh, I did accept a new job uh, this this week, this past week. Signed the papers. <laughs> it's a done deal. So uh, got an offer letter and everything. So I will be working a you know full time job once my schooling is over for this semester. So the Friday night show, and I'm, I'll talk to these guys about it because they even they don't know chat. So this is the first they're hearing about this. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to talk about this afterwards, but the show may either have to shift later and we'll have to just do the, the show in like a two hour segment or we'll have to move the show like right before Max's man cave or something on a Sunday. So we're, we'll we'll figure something out. I want to be respectful of these guys' time as well. So we're going to figure out a time that works for everyone. But yeah, uh, if for the first few weeks of my my new job, it, there may be a learning curve. So we'll keep you guys updated with that. But Friday nights may either have to shift, or I may be getting off early on Fridays, and we'll be able to keep the time the same. So we'll see. But <laughs> damn. Josh, you alone have been keeping me afloat, my friend. So you're the <laughs> only reason why I can do this. <laughs> um, I know, That's right? That's awesome, MG? dude. Congrats. I didn't even oh, know. Oh, thanks, man. I know. I, I I forgot to tell you guys. So it's, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's good news. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. So MG says, congrats. It better not affect the stream. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. Thankfully, the job seems to be one where once I'm off, I can turn it off and I can come back here and hang out with you guys. So that is the plan. So nice. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I I didn't want something that was going to be so intensive to where like I just wouldn't have a life. So I um, hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that should do it for this evening. Like I said, just wanted to kind of give you guys a little heads up. Uh, but for the members, we'll see you guys in like 10, 15 minutes. We're going to head on over there. It should be fun. Uh, you know, grab your little footy b- pajamas, grab a nice cold or hot beverage, whatever you prefer. And uh, we're going to be re- reviewing some document cards. So we'll, we'll have a fun time. Uh, Drew, Kyle, you guys got anything before we take off? Uh, once again, thank you guys for holding down the fort last week. You're welcome. No, I'm good. Cool. I think Drew's asleep. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> Either that or his delay is so off that it's just been like hours. Yeah. So. Nah, Drew's asleep. All right. Well, <laughs> uh, have a great night later, everybody. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. Uh, there it is. <laughs>